All right, hello everyone, and uh, welcome back to Gold Gates and Goblins, a new campaign alternating with Icewind Dale. This is the second ongoing campaign on the channel, and we're going to be playing Descent into Avernus. Now, of course, my name is Merchant, and uh, very, very happy to welcome you into this new campaign. But you will notice that we are joined by a new cast member, which is very, very exciting, especially as Runaway Robot, or Joel, will be joining us as a new DM, which is very, very cool indeed, because it frees up so much sort of, you know, just production and so much free time for our D&D content moving forward. So we're all very, very excited. So all I'm really going to ask you to do, leave a like, comment down below. You know all the good stuff. It's episode one of the campaign. So getting it off the ground, that really helps. And uh, yeah, I'm going to hand over to Joel to give a little intro and take it away. Hi, I'm Joel, Runaway Robot. Um, <clears throat> I'm a professional GM. Uh, this is this is my job, um, amongst other things, and a content creator on, on Twitch and YouTube. Um, please excuse my moving boxes. I have just arrived at my new home, so that will hopefully be gone by the time we record this next. I would like to thank Alias for uh, bringing me on here and suggesting me so I can I can join this <laughs> this awesome cast. So hopefully you find my style of uh, uh, DMing enjoyable and fun to watch and consume uh, to your heart's content. Uh, Everyone probably knows as an audience who these people are, but I like doing introductions, especially on episode ones, just in case there are new people that don't know any of them here and they're seeing Descent into Avernus and I want to see people going to hell. Uh, so we'll we'll start with, uh, let's do Kat. Kat, you, you go first. Sure. Uh, hi, I'm Kat or Lady Lavinius and uh, I am a Magic the Gathering content creator. I stream and make YouTube comment uh, content. I am a cosplayer as well as a uh, new player to D&D. &D. I've been playing for about a year, so I'm the baby of the group, but it's good to see you guys. Excellent, thank you. Uh, Justin, how about you next? Hello, I'm Justin, also known as Theric Six, or just Six. Um, I also make magic content. Uh, I have a YouTube channel. However, I have a second YouTube channel where I do other things like play Hades or Stone Shard, things like that. Um, and that's, that's kind of it. Just check out my YouTube channels. <laughs> Everything is linked nice. down below, of course. Go follow everyone. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Craig, how about you? Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm Craig. I'm not a, a YouTuber or a, or a streamer or anything like that. But if you've been on uh, Merchant's channel for a while, you've no doubt seen me in Magic videos or the D and D content stuff like that. Um, you can find me on Twitter for my annual tweet, which I like to put out <laughs> once a year. <laughs> D and D Craig. Um, but that's about it for me. Nice. Excellent. Alias, how about you? Hello, I'm a, oh, I'm Alias, nice to meet you, or see you again, depending on if you're new to the channel or not. I'm a Magic the Gathering content creator, commentator, and certified crazy cat lady. Um, yeah, so if you like cards, cats, and commentary, come hang out with me. Excellent. And Connor, I know you did your thing already, <laughs> but you're a player this time, so I, I get am. to call on you again. Uh, yeah. Introduce yourself one more time for me. Hello, everyone. My name is Merchant. Uh, you're on my channel. I'm a Magic the Gathering YouTuber primarily, although it's safe to say... One of my real passions is, uh, is Dungeons and Dragons, where I've ran campaigns on this channel for a while now, for a few years, playing with most of these fine people for a long time. We have some newer faces, some old faces, and Craig's face. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, very excited. Uh, once again, I just want to extend a really warm welcome to Joel. Please, you know, show your appreciation for him in the comments. Very, very excited to, uh, to get to play, which is, hasn't happened for a while, because I'm usually the ones bossing people about and trying to kill them, but... Yeah. <laughs> Now it's time a, to be yeah. bossed about and attempt to survive being killed. As a fellow forever DM, uh, <laughs> it is always a pleasure to actually be able to sit in a, in a character slot for, for once. Uh, I know I have some very large footsteps to, to walk in here, but um, hopefully my flavor is, uh, is fun, fun for everyone. Uh, and I think on, on, on that note, and as our uh, other music dies out, let's, uh, let's, let's get into the game. We uh, find ourselves in a great city known as Baldur's Gate. I'm going to go ahead and throw you guys up onto a map here so you can see the horseshoe-shaped city in all of its glory on the Chianthar River. And so let me know if you have any issues <laughs> observing that. Um, but this is where we will start our game. Our camera comes down above the clouds after we see the descent into Avernus, um, you know, title screen, <laughs> and we find ourselves in the lower city here. Welcome to Baldur's Gate. It is a veritable nest of rats and vipers clinging to the rocky slopes overlooking the Kianthar River. 
From their high perches in the upper city, the local nobles, known as patriarchs, gaze down with veiled contempt upon the common rabble in the grimy lower city, which hugs the foggy harbor. The whole of Baldur's Gate reeks of blood, crime, and opportunity. One can easily fathom why pirates and traitors are drawn to this place like flies to a carcass. Following the river farther east would eventually lead you to Elturel, capital of the holy land of Eltergard, or at least that was the case until a few days ago. The flood of refugees from Elturel has gotten worse since news first arrived that the city has fallen. Everyone is saying Baldur's Gate is next, but no one truly knows who or what has claimed Elturel. The Patriarchs pay a mercenary company called the Flaming Fist to protect their interests in Baldur's Gate, and by extension, the city of itself. The Flaming Fist has gained even more power since their charismatic leader, Older Ravenguard, claimed the title of Grand Duke a few years ago. Apparently, Ravenguard is missing, in his absence, the Flaming Fist has sealed the city's gates to staunch the flow of refugees. No one is allowed in or out. All of this was brought to your attention shortly after you were drafted by the Flaming Fist to help defend the city. Reasons being your own, whether you volunteered or were forcibly uh, brought into service. Your orders are to speak to Captain Zodge at the Basilisk Gate which pierces the city's eastern wall and takes its name from the various statues that rest in its niches and perch atop its battlements. Unseen beyond the sealed basilisk gate, a dirt road stretches through the outer city slums to the bridge known as the Worms Crossing and distant realms beyond. Dozens of flaming fist soldiers are trying to control an angry mob of commoners eager to leave the city. Armed with only a vague description of what Captain Zodge looks like, tall man, long black hair, leather eye patch, it takes you a while to find him. A fight breaks out between the soldiers and commoners, and you finally spot the one-eyed captain as he wades into the fray, begins throwing punches. It's just another day in the city of blood. You will find yourself here at the Basilisk Gate right now, over on the eastern side of the city right there and this i think is where we find our various different adventurers uh, arriving on the scene there is a brawl happening right outside the gates but there are very many different little little nooks and crannies that our adventurers could be coming from so as our camera pans across from the fight to our first cast member who uh who do you think we would see first and who would like to volunteer I think uh, I think Francis and I would be having a quite a keen gander at what's going on, really. Okay, okay. So give me a description, Connor, of your character, and uh, how about their name as well, and then uh, we'll move from there. Okay, so I'm playing Hugo Fitzwilliam. He's quite a well-dressed half-elf with shortly cropped black hair and fantastic mustache and goatee combination, reminiscent of kind of cavalier fashion, perhaps seen in the hierarchy of society among noble knights and whatnot. He appears to be holding himself quite proudly, which doesn't really line up with the sort of common garb he's been assigned, I imagine, as a member of the Flaming Fist. He looks a little bit out of place, almost as though he'd be more comfortable as an officer or a gentleman overseeing proceedings, and he looks quite shocked at what he sees before him with this captain wildly swinging punches. Excellent. Um, do you have a... Uh... Any, uh, so like what weapons are you carrying? Are oh, you, so you'd you see, uh, anything? slung on his, on his back is a, a very nondescript longbow. Looks to be standard issue, but well kept. Mm -hmm. And slung by his side is a long, thin sword, a rapier, if you like. Excellent. Uh, and you said that you were with, uh, Francis, is that correct? That's correct. Francis, uh, as our camera looks over this gentlemanly looking man who is wearing a very kind of drab uh, uniform. It uh, looks probably that it wasn't fitted for them uh, and kind of out of place on their uh, bearing. Uh, how about you? What does Francis look hmm. like? Sure thing. So um, Francis Valier stands um, 
an average height with a, a slim build. So uh, he's a human man. Um, he's wearing well, this to be quite a, a fine set of clothing beneath the uniform and armor, um, with a voluminous black cape hanging from his shoulders with a large hood. Um, a long, sharp, well-kept rapier hangs at his side, as well as um, strapped across his back with a leather strap is a well-kept-looking silver flute. Um, he has long black hair, which is neatly swept back, and there are streaks of white at his temples. He also has a chin-strap beard framing his narrow face, uh, which seems to be fixed in a sort of slightly sarcastic-looking expression. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, and so this maybe is on one street corner here, and our camera pans to the next street corner, maybe walk, watching someone uh, walk out and first seeing this brawl happening. So who do we see next? You see Rowan. Excellent. Tell me about Rowan. All right, so Rowan Frey is a <clears throat> average height young woman, uh, probably early 20s. She's got curly blonde hair, blue eyes, and as well is a adorning the garb of the Flaming Fist, but you can see she's not super comfortable with what's going on. She's a little bit skittish. Comes to see this fight break out and grabs her longsword that is down at her side, looks for her shield, you know, bracing herself to get ready for uh, anything that might come her way. Um, she's not the strongest frame. She's not overly athletic or big belt or anything like that. She's just, she looks like she shouldn't really be there and uh, doesn't Excellent. seem like she wants to be either. Okay. Maybe uh, noticing this this rather uh, skittish looking person. Uh, who's, who's the next one we see walk out towards the gate? Go. Fine, fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're going to see uh, V. She, they, right now, are just in a very long hooded cloak um, where you can't really see their face or anything basically about them. Right now, just, that's all you're going to get. It's very Perfect. mysterious <laughs> yes. falling through. <laughs> and maybe on the uh, most southern road over here, we, uh, we have our last approaching Cyrus. Tell me about yourself. Cyrus Lumiere is a, quite the lithe figure. Um, looks to be around the early 20s. He has a, a long white beard that uh, kind of undermines his age. It, it appears way too long for how old he is. Uh, additionally, he has long uh, white locks flowing past his shoulders, just, just barely. Um, he is supported uh, by his very large, uh, slender staff that appears to be made of birch, but it's, it's birch not completely shaved, there still seems to be a bark both on it and peeling and potentially being renewed. His skin is a very pallid type color, but it doesn't look sickly. He looks as if uh, a cloud. His eyes are a nice, very bright blue with specks of sunlight in it, as if, uh, again, he's uh, a, a member of the sky fallen down to the earth. Um, he appears to have some sort of tattooing, very light colored uh, on his skin in a language that perhaps you you may have seen before, but you don't quite know if it's a language or just stylized runes. Um, besides his staff, he is uh, essentially equipped with just some some clothing that he was demanded to wear by the um, Fire Fist people. Um, ah, yes. And yeah, I believe uh, I believe that's about it of Cyrus. Yeah, uh, Cyrus, uh, though this is a uh, pretty you know, metropolitan city, many different shapes and sizes of, of people and creatures living here, uh, you definitely would draw some gazes of like, you're interesting enough looking that the people that are observing the fight from a distance would also notice that like this minor ray of sunshine has stepped forward uh, on the southern road here and just is observing things. So you, there's some like people like whispering uh, back and forth to each other and gesturing and like, wow, look at that guy over there. Uh, yeah, I, but I think Rowan, on the street that you were on where you observed uh, this hooded, this cloaked figure kind of just off to the side, uh, they look rather suspicious, and they seem to be staring down the fight here and, and unmoving. Do, do you think we should get involved, or are they just going to keep doing this? Uh, I, 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 I don't know what we should do. Where's the captain? 
M me? Are you, are you talking to me? Yes, you, you're part of the Flaming Fist, aren't you? Uh, yes, you're right. Uh, do we normally get involved in this type of thing? I I don't know. I'm relatively new, so... So am I. Uh, oh. Well? Maybe we should ask those guys? Uh, after you, then. Okay. I'm going to scurry off towards uh, the two confident-looking gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, the ones that are uniformed and not taking part in this brawl that are, like, you know, of other uniformed members of the Flaming Fist. They're just kind of sitting there just watching this. I was like, yeah, not my day to do this. Sure. You approach both of them. Uh, ex excuse me, sirs. D do you know what's going on here? Should we, should we get involved? Hmm. I'd look over at them and just go, well, if you ask me, it looks like the captain's rather gotten in order, hasn't he? Oh, he just clocked one absolutely terribly. Did you see that, Francis? I was on a jab <laughs> and elbow in Francis's ribs. <laughs> oh, yes, Hugo. He certainly lay into them. It's something oh. quite satisfied almost about seeing the rival get dispersed. Absolutely barbaric, but not without its merits. I, I, I don't think it's a laughing matter. Uh, uh, I mean... Uh as you say that, the camera pans over and the captain, like, suplexes a guy <laughs> over his shoulder. <laughs> I see, well, it, I suppose it's not particularly a laughing matter, but one must find the joy in the little things. Very well. How do you propose we get involved, Valiant? Uh, forgive me, I didn't catch your name. Uh, uh, I'm Rowan. Ah, Hugo. Charmed. Yes, and, and I'm V. Nice, nice to meet you. Likewise. V, is anything visible under your cloak, or are you just like a talking cloak at this point? Oh, I'm basically like a talking cloak. Like, I just, uh, yeah. I, I don't... We'll talk later in a less crowded <laughs> area. Well, that sounds sure. darkly promising. <laughs> Yeah, right now you're just like a cloak with like a little flaming fist badge on it, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, that like a entirety. little badge. It's mm -hmm. like a very long purplish cloak um, mm -hmm. with some details, and that's that's basically all you and see. A very small voice that comes out. It's like, yeah, yes. okay, and awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay, so d did you guys want to weigh in or, or just wade into the fray as well, or are you just going to let this one play out? Well, I'm going to be kind of cocked eyebrow almost, not not mockingly, but kind of amusedly waiting for what Rowan exactly plans to do about this. She's just kind of like shifting back and forth, like, you know, oh, there's someone running past. Uh, no, no, not yet. Uh, um, um, it's, it's, please stop. Oh, no. Uh, I think you no. may have to ask a little more persuasively than that. Well, what do you, by hitting them? You could, or at least make them think you're going to hit them. I don't know, what do you think, Francis? Shall we wade into the fray? These things have a way of resolving themselves. I... I don't see the need. I can't believe you brought your flute to a street riot. Perhaps <laughs> oh, a I twinkle know. on that would calm them down. <laughs> no, I, I, I only save that for special occasions. Ah, of course. Of course, wouldn't want to be crass. Well, seeing as we've made a couple of new associates, it seems like it would be somewhat safe to at least try and defuse the situation. Right. So, onwards then. And I'll, with, yeah. a, with a heavy hand on Rowan's back, like, hat them forwards and start yeah, walking. Yeah, like, shove them yeah, into the, start, like, start towards, the group. towards the fray. Uh, yeah. Get my shield out. Um, mm -hmm. Cyrus, you observe that there seems to be a, a group of four. Um, two of them seem to, to have the garb of uh, the flaming fist, the, the other two, and, and they seem to have just shoved this woman who, who who's got their their shield and and sword out uh, and, and towards this this uh, fracas. Cyrus has been standing here, just incredibly conflicted. His internal monologue essentially sums up to, I mean, there's there's a ruckus here, but like, I don't want to hurt him too bad. Eventually, he, he realizes, like, I guess this is technically my job now. Uh, he walks over and uh, is kind of to the edge of the brawl, where, like, the little the little circle, <laughs> the, the barrier. Yeah, where the people are like, um, yeah, yeah, get him. <laughs> <laughs> and he uh, essentially just says, please stop. I wish you no harm, but I will harm you 
if I need to. We hear you like is saying this, and then everyone's just yelling in the middle. People are getting punched. Uh, but it's just no one, no one has paid attention in the in the slightest. At this point, I essentially lower my uh, lower my staff into a ready position. Okay. All right. Uh, Rowan, you have been shoved towards this <laughs> this this group, this uh, brawl. Uh, what do you want to do here? I'm I'm gonna shove in and try to get to the captain. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Roll me, roll me some athletics. Let's see if you can't shove your way into uh, where the where the captain is here. Twelve. Twelve. Yeah, you're doing. You're trying. You're doing your best. It's a pretty, you know, it's pretty dense, and you're just like, shoulder them past. And like, I think the ones that you are able to get past, like, note that you have like a blade out. It looks like the other guards that are in here are just either laying about with like batons uh, or just their their fists in general. Um, but you've got steel. Baird, and they're like, okay, well, I don't want to die today. So they kind of back up a little bit, and you know, eventually you're able to, to kind of move your way forward here. Um, it looks like uh, Rowan, Rowan is going to get lost to the crowd here. Uh, Hugo, Francis V, is there anything that you would like to do as Rowan oh, basically uh... disappears into the throng? <laughs> I, I would absolutely, as much as much as my sarcastic shoving may suggest otherwise, I would absolutely sort of barrel in after okay. them and make sure this, yes. this new acquaintance of mine doesn't get overwhelmed by the mob, perhaps. And I, w I wouldn't draw my weapon, though. Absolutely. I would stay weapon-free and just sort of be shoving and jostling yeah, violently. <laughs> roll, roll me some athletics, too. Okay, let me... Uh, let's figure first it roll, out. let's go. Athletics. That is a... Uh, that 16. did not. A 16. It did roll. There 16, sir. Yes. Uh, yeah, so you do a little bit better. You're able to catch up with the Rowan rather easily. Maybe you've got like a hand on their shoulder and you're like kind of shoving through and creating a pathway behind where our other two friends like V can just kind of calmly walk behind <laughs> you both as you part the Red Sea here uh, on the way to the, the captain up front. Cyrus, you see that there's a, uh, it looks to be some kind of disturbance over on the other side where you observe these four entering uh, the fray earlier. Uh, is there anything that you would like to do? Um, I would essentially uh, be focusing on tripping dissidents. Tri I don't want to smack some... people in the head. Yeah. Right? You know, I just want to. <laughs> yeah. I want to make it so they can't contribute uh, to the furthering of the brawl. Absolutely. Uh, roll me an, an attack. You're going to just attempt to uh, trip some people with your with your quarterstaff here, correct? Yes. All right, let's find out how well that goes for you. An 18, yeah, double 18. You, you do. And like some of them aren't even involved in the fray. You're just like, oh, that girl's there. Gaga over there, this one over here. It's like some of them would seem to be trying to like run away. And you're like, no, 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 you're next. And uh, yeah, you, you <laughs> seem to be d dispatching them rather swiftly as they all hit the ground. Uh, the, the extra muscle being involved in this fight here does cause uh, a lot of the crowd to disperse pretty quickly. It seems that they are now outnumbered by uh, the guards that are getting involved. Um, you do eventually find your everyone into the center here, a, a Captain Zaj, as he decks one last uh, dissident to the ground here. You also note that it looks like some of the other uh, flaming fists here, there seems to be six others, have uh, been pocketing some coin from some rather bruised and beat up people uh, in a, maybe an effort to assuage them from beating them even further. Uh, but Zaj, though, as he wipes some blood off of his lip and shakes out his hand, sees you all approach, he goes, about bloody time. Now, what is this? One, two, three, four. Where's the fifth? And as our bright ray of sunshine begins to finish tripping their way through the crowd, they approach, and uh, you have all reached the center of this, which is this fray which is dispersing as as such good well about time you all showed up bloody hell knuckles oh, gonna need to wrap this one up and he puts like uh, his hand out and one of the uh, other flaming fist guards comes over and begins wrapping his hand it seems to be a you know kind of a practice maneuver that they're pretty used to getting into this kind of scrap those of you that have been involved with the flaming fist for maybe longer than uh than v has for instance um would note that yeah this is about the way that things are done here in Baldur's gate um if there's a problem you you beat the problem out and if the problem continues you hit it harder and that's how the flaming fist operates that and bribes 
as you all, I guess, circle around observing now Cyrus here, is there anything that you guys would like to say to one another before uh, Zaj takes the stage? Well, I would gesture uh, to the captain when he's having his hand bandaged up and just go, exemplary work, sir. Yeah, lots of practice, thankfully, mm. but uh, I appreciate that. Now, I've got two uniformed ones, that's good, and you know, you've got a badge, Cloaky, and you yep. put the damn longsword away. Maybe learn how to punch a little bit more there. Yes, maybe use your <laughs> shield a little bit better. You don't want to kill them all. There's enough blood on these streets anyways without you sh sh shivving someone in the middle of a fight. Uh, I had no intention of shivving anyone, so just, right. just scare them off. And you, with the stick doing the trippy thing that looks like a bright ray of sunshine, and he looks up to the clouds, which have been over Baldur's Gate for probably a couple of weeks, he's like, that I haven't seen in quite a long time. Uh, you're part of this whole thing. I was simply told to contact the captain. That appears to be you. It unfortunately does. So, like anything you can put on, your skin is kind of glowy and distracting. No, not really. Uh, fine. As you can see, he gestures around to like a couple of the unconscious people <laughs> on the ground. He's like, there has been a crisis. This refugee crisis has stoked the fears that Baldur's Gate might suffer the same fate as El Terrell, which apparently nothing remains but a hole in the ground. Don't ask me how that happened. Our Grand Duke, Older Raven God, was visiting El Terrell on a diplomatic mission, and the city was destroyed. Coincidence? I think not. The Knights of El Tegard call themselves Hell Riders. A few of them escape the destruction and think we're somehow to blame for El Terrell's downfall. What a bunch of self-righteous rabble-rousers. We're arresting them all on sight, of course, but that's left us shorthanded to deal with another problem. This is where you come in. You two newbies and the rest of you. And no, you can't say no to this. I could just have you executed on the spot. And as he says that, the other six, after one of them has finished wrapping his hands, kind of like ease their swords a little bit in their sheaths this time, rather than resorting to any batons. So I'll take that as an acceptance then, all of your silence. I think so. It doesn't seem we have much of a choice. Sir. You don't. Good. <sighs> Baldur's Gate has long been plagued by the followers of the Dead Three. He says the Dead Three in a very particular fashion that lets you know that it is a capitalized Dead and capitalized Three. <laughs> The gods of Bane, Baal, and Merkel. I thought we had wiped them out, but apparently not. These purveyors of fear and death are taking advantage of the current crisis to commit murder sprees throughout the city. As my appointed deputies in this matter, you will have license to kill these wretches on sight. Find their lair, wipe it out. Eliminate anyone who gets in your way, and... Have no worries about any collateral damage. If you do what I say, I'll see that each of you, including those that are already in our service, receive a bonus of 200 gold pieces each in addition to my gratitude, which is obviously worth considerably more. A few blocks from here, Elfsong Tavern, there's a spy named Tarina. She hangs out there, gathering rumors for the guild. Again, capitalized G for guild in some importance. She owes me a favor. Tell her you work for me, ask her what she knows about the Dead Three, and for the love of Baldurun, be nice. Tarina has some very dangerous friends. Yes, sir. Out of character. Uh, how are we spelling Captain Zodge? Yeah, let me, let me go get him. Z... O D G E. I'll go ahead and put that in the oh, chat. I was, got it right. I was right, eh? Zodge. <laughs> I'll look around at, uh, well, not so much at Francis, but at our new associates. I go, well, 
Are we all in this together? Seems awfully dangerous to take on for any of us alone. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. It seems that way. What about you? I sort of shoot a dubious glance at the hooded figure with the shiny badge. Well, I don't want to die today. I have things to do, so uh, yeah, I will accompany you. Right. Sounds like we're all in then, doesn't it? Shall we head to this tavern straight away, Captain? I would appreciate that, but it's up to you on how you do it. Take too long, though. And he kind of just gives a glance over to the six behind him. All of them, but they're, you know, easily resting on their weapons. Well, we'll make you comply. I don't understand. We are all business partners. Why? Why threaten us? Some people get cold feet when they're supposed to be working. Try to skip town. Try to, I don't know, get drunk in an alleyway somewhere and say they forgot or get in trouble elsewhere. You get in trouble on your own time. Your time is mine right now. Aren't we good? He, he kind of just uh, is, is a little bit unsure now. <laughs> As he as he just kind of fades back within the the other four, yeah. Okay, is there anything else that you guys would like to ask or of Zaj or the other six of these uh, flaming fist veterans around him, um, or would you like to proceed onwards? I don't think I'd have anything. I think we proceed. Excellent. So the Elf Song uh, Tavern, as Zaj has said. Um, who spent uh, a lot of time here in Baldur's Gate? Mm, I've lived here all my life. Yeah, <laughs> so same with my character. This is and my very first day. Your first day here, okay. First day. So V, you unfortunately have no idea where no the idea. Elf Song Tavern is, uh, but that's okay because two people in your party do, and they know that it is not overly far away. Uh, the Elf Song Tavern is rather well known to residents here in, in Baldur's Gate uh, due to, from time to time, there's a disembodied voice of a female elf that fills the tavern with a melancholy song. There's no real timer for this, just every once in a while it happens. And it's kind of like, you know, a little, a little bit of a tourist destination if in the lower city and still incredibly dangerous. Things to note about taverns in Baldur's Gate here is a uh, nice sentence that kind of encapsulates the entire experience as hard on the stomach, especially when someone sticks a knife in there. <laughs> so knowing that some of our uh, Baldurians, our natives, would absolutely know that in any case, even the alleyways or the taverns where you think you're safe, you're entirely not. But navigating to the Elf Song Cavern is made much easier by having some people who are local to the city. Would you guys like to head straight there? Would I know it to be a, a particularly rough establishment or a nice one? Or? Uh, let's find out. Roll me an intelligence check at advantage due to the fact that you are a local here. Okie dokie. All right, intelligence. That is a natural 20. That's a natural 20. 20. Woo. You might have been here before. Uh, I like you. Maybe you were interested in this, this rumor. I do of like this, to lie, base. This <laughs> disembodied elf voice. That seems really awesome. Um, it's not... It's not overly rough. Hmm. Um, there are the occasional brawls, but that's expected here in the city. Uh, the bouncers there, though, aren't for the patrons' protection. They're just for staff protection, and they will not intervene in any fights happening within the bar unless one of those, uh, one of their workers becomes, you know, in need of help. Um, you would know that it's a, a rather nice establishment, considering it being in the lower city. It has multiple private dining rooms, a couple of very nice rooms, two floors. You also know that there's quite a bit of gambling that goes on here. Hmm. Okay. I would, uh, yeah, I'd sort of relate to the group. I'd say, hmm, 
Could be worse. Could be going to one of the real CD places. I've had a few work dinners at the Elf Song. It's not entirely unpleasant. Do keep your wits about you, though. You would also know the uh, the name of the the tavern's current owner and operator. So I'll go ahead and give you that as well. Okay. Uh, Alan Alith. Uh, he's a half elf man, uh, roughly seventy five years of age, and you would know that as I say, current owner. He's owned it for decades. Well, half elves live quite a while. Um, but yeah, you would you would know he's kind of a, a no nonsense type, but uh, is willing to help out friends with issues if the need arises. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I guess I'd just lead the way. <clears throat> uh, well, as, as we're walking, I would just turn to the, the other three in the group and just say, so are you all from Baldur's Gate? Have you lived here long? Um, yes, I, 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 I guess I've been here most of my life. Um, mostly uh, lived in the, the, the upper city and uh, was... Um, relocated down here in the lower city. I imagine not by choice. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <clears throat> I've been here for around a week. I've lived with my mother and father just a day's trek away. We have a little farm that we would live off. But I felt that I should do more to help people. Hmm. I came here and I got drafted. Now I think I'm helping people. Uh, you notice me, uh, well, at least the hood, like really looking a little closely at uh, Cyrus and just like, just curiously. <laughs> uh, no, this is my first day here. Um, I've never met people that looked like all of you before. It's going to take some time getting used to. You've never met exactly a... What you look like. You've never met a human or a half-elf? Uh, and where are you from to have not met them? Um, Additionally, you said you arrived today, but the gates are closed. They let no one in. Uh... Well... I don't, I don't like to speak a lot. Um, I'll, I'll tell you when we get in a more secluded area than this. I don't feel comfortable. I think at uh at the the hoods vis visible, <laughs> I guess discomfort. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I I think Hugo would kind of snap out of a little bit and be like, ah, well, we all have our secrets. Makes us all the more interesting, doesn't it? Very well. Shall we move onwards? I like that I Hugo is incredibly stuff. trusting. He's like, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> Talking about totally, this is totally fine. fine. <laughs> yeah. this is about Secluded me. area? <laughs> totally fine. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Um, yeah, I think at this point you guys would probably arrive uh, at the, the tavern here, the Elf Song. And uh, yeah, you would head on uh, inside to attempt to find this this person uh, the elf song tavern even for it being roughly midday here is rather busy which is good for tavern owners um especially uh if they're paying customers <laughs> alan alice uh attends the bar and you note that there are two young men running around taking orders delivering drink and food to tables uh, and joking with clientele Flanking the entrance are the two bouncers. As uh, previously noted, there's a suit of animated armor. And then there's a gruff female half-ogre uh, standing outside. There are patrons inside, and most of them are pretty well-armed and armored. They huddle around tables in the main room and in private booths. Three padded chairs are angled towards a fireplace on the east wall underneath the creaky staircase that climbs to the second floor. There's a drunk passed out on a couch against the north wall, and next to the couch sits a wooden sea chest that contains an assortment of games, dragon chest and uh, dragon chess boards as well as used decks of three dragon anti-cards and, and so on. Hmm. Uh, V's gonna kind of 
go over towards the animated suit of armor and kind of just look at it and very... I'm going to follow V very carefully. <laughs> Make sure she doesn't yeah. do anything. Uh, sorry, mm -hmm. I just... What is this thing? Is it alive? Hmm. Depends on your definition of alive, I suppose. Truthfully, you'd be better off asking Francis about it. I'm not much of a arcane sort myself. But he knows a thing or two. Francis, are you... Come over here, can you, for a second? Uh, I have a question. Very well. I shall walk over. Uh, this, this armor, uh, it's moving. Is it alive? Uh, Joel, what would a bard know about animated armor? Let's find out. Roll me a nature check. Let's see if you know okay. the nature of animated armor. Or Arcana. I'll take either on this one. All right. I've already clicked nature. I got 15. 15. It's good. Um, Alive? No. Uh, magically imbued empty suits of armor? Yeah. Uh, most of them... Uh, they just kind of exist, and they function based on the orders of either their creator or or someone who's been uh, assigned to them with whatever the code word would be to utilize them. Some of them have been given speech, rather simple terms, and you would know of uh, animated armors of, of legend, maybe, that had, like, full capability of being able to hold actual conversations. Um they pretty much are limited to following the commands of their creators or the, the last order that they receive from their owner. And that's it. Okay. Uh, I'll say, um, uh, no, it's it's not alive. It doesn't have a soul. It's uh, merely a tool. If you think of it that way, it's here to do a job. And when it does its job, that's it. That's all it does. Ah, uh, I see. And, I'm gonna take. She's gonna take up and uh, pull her hood even further down. It's understood. Uh, let's let's go and talk to the owner now. I guess. Who is the owner? Is, do you not? Do you know? I've been here uh, a few times. It's a chap named Alan. Okay. Been here a few times uh, on company work, but don't know him too well. Do you know what he looks like? I'd imagine he's the chap behind the bar. I kind of nod my head towards Alan behind the bar. Okay. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll go. I'll go speak to him, I guess. Um, or we we can all go. That that'd be better. Okay. Well, let's all go. <clears throat> yeah, Alan is uh, behind the bar, uh, doing barkeeper things, making small talk with one of the customers sitting in a stool and uh, cleaning a, a mug of some kind or or pouring another drink as the uh, the two boys that are running around taking orders come and grab uh, things from the bar itself. And he looks up and he sees the, the group of you approaching the bars. Oh, hello. Did not expect some of the Flaming Fist to be in today. So, ah, Hugo, I see you there. What can I do you for? Hello, Alan. Don't worry about the Flaming Fist. It's an association most loose. Anyway, we're here to, uh, well, find somebody, I believe. Although, of, of course, first, I think we'd uh, love to get a round of drinks in. Oh, yes. Of course, of oh. course, of course, of course, course. What can I'll I get you all? Job. I'll turn around to the group and say, I'll just say, what can I get you all? Uh, just a glass of water for me, please. I, I, I don't think we should be drinking on the job, should we? You'll learn, oh, yes. One, one would be fine, I That's think. Fine. I'll have a sherry, please. It's a working lunch. Excellent. Five sherries, please. Uh, uh, four. Nothing for me, thank you. If you insist. Five sherries, please. <laughs> five sherries it is. All right. And uh, he goes and he goes and pops a fresh bottle for you and pours out five sherries in these kind of nice-looking little glasses. It's very good. It's very fancy. I'll, uh, I'll hand them out and I'll go, are you sure? V towards the hooded figure. Uh, yes, I'm very sure. Ah, oh, very well. I'll knock back V's one and put it on the counter, and then I'll, uh, I'll go down and go, how much do I owe you? Let's see. I think for Sherry's, uh, let's call it, like, a silver apiece. It's a rather nice bottle. Hmm, it is rather nice. Very well, I'll slap down five silver on the, uh, on the bar, bar top, our counter. I'll say, anyway, about our business... We're here looking for somebody named Tarina, I believe. 
Oh, yeah, Tarina, she's a bit of a regular here. Um, she likes gambling upstairs. Uh, she's probably up there taking people's coin right now. Well, marvelous. I suppose we'll go try and find her. Uh, what does she look like, Alan? How will we recognize her? Must be the one with all the money. <laughs> Alan gives a, a, a chuckle to that. He's like, that is very true. I actually have my suspicions that she's not well, not being fair, but, uh, you know, she uh, she does pay well. So who am I to challenge any of that? Uh, Tarina, well, so she's uh, she's a bit short, you know, kind of small, um, a bit tough looking. Um, I, I, I mean, she wears a hood most of the time, so I'm not exactly sure what color her hair is. I'll, uh, I'll nudge V and go, oh, it sounds like you'll get on like a house on fire. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, should we go? We're looking for somebody short and tough with a hood in Baldur's Gate. <laughs> In a tavern. Right, I know. Uh, I'm starting to think that maybe this is. Well, you know, she does the job of being rather inconspicuous pretty well. That. Hmm. Just blends in. Let's hope she wants uh, us to find her then. I don't think she wants anyone to find her. I think she just wants to find some coin and someone who's willing to play cards. You you said upstairs. Yes, uh, yeah, uh, if you just go over by the fireplace, you can see the stairs right back there. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, ha have a nice day. I'm oh, going to wander too. off towards the stairs. <laughs> I'll follow. Yeah, I'll, I'll head off with them. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> Rowan, okay. you seem troubled. Um, uh, no, it's just I, I don't do very well in crowded places and with loud noise and... Uh, You've lived in Baldur's settings. Gate all your life. You don't do well with crowds and loud noises. No. Oh. Well, neither do I, so I, uh, you, we can stay close. Okay. I just want to get, uh, go, go find this lady or this, this hooded person and, uh, just, just find the thing that we need to, to do and get out of here quickly if we, <laughs> if we can. I'm going to hang back a little bit so I'm walking next to Francis and just <laughs> lean over to him and go, we might have our work cut out for us, old chap. <laughs> they seem a rather nervous bunch, they don't do they? They do somewhat. It may be rather counterproductive to our aims, but <laughs> who knows? Perhaps we'll turn into firm fellows. <laughs> Let's hope so. Chance would be a fine thing. <laughs> I walk as up you the head, stairs. Yeah, as you head upstairs, uh, you note that the downstairs is rather crowded, but the upstairs does have its, its share of noises. It, it does seem that there are people up here. Um, you would note that the uh, there's lit hand lanterns hanging from the rafters in this kind of windowless room. Along the edges, you note that there are several doors, maybe six or seven, leading probably to either other private dining rooms or uh, guest chambers. Uh, rugs cover the wooden floor and help dampen the noise from the drunken patrons gathered around two large tables. They seem to be eating and playing games of Baldur's Bones. You note that there are four individuals around one of these tables, uh, and one does indeed have their hood up. Their back is to you currently, they're kind of short looking, they're up close to the table here, and they have uh, uh, cards in their hand. And this is in one of the private rooms, right? No, this is a, a large okay. landing. Uh, basically, the stairs come out. Mm -hmm. The the rooms themselves would be uh, anchored on the edges here through the, the doors that are around this big central room. Okay. Mm. Uh, there's a hood hooded figure over there. Why did you that introduce be... yourself? Uh... Yes, yes, I should. Um, all right. And so I'm going to walk over um, 
and say quick question you do walk right you're not just like floating oh no no i'm, I'm all walking but okay. it's the, the cape is it's so it's we so long you can't even see floating. we're like what? You can't, well it's, it's it's the cape drags a little bit it's kind of like a worn out kind of there is it has a little bit of rips uh on the very bottom from from walking but you can't really see any of the feet so it's, it's okay. kind of like gliding but if I was one of my other characters, makes me a little concerned that you said any characters. of the feet. Just stop it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, g -g 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 ghost. <laughs> uh, you can you can hear footsteps though. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So you approach this hooded figure who is playing cards right now. Um, do you observe for a moment, or you just go ahead and make your presence known? Uh, for a moment, there's a hesitation. Um, out of out of just you just notice that the figure stops moving and uh but then um V's gonna get her courage up and say um uh excuse me hello there's currently no answer uh you watch as like another set of cards go down um <clears throat> uh, Tarina what what hello oh hello there Hooded one? Uh, thank you, Rowan. Um, hello, Torino. Uh, we have been sent by Captain Zodj um, to talk to you, if you have some B free time. Busy. Just, just give me a moment. Can I? I just need to. Uh, I so understand. Oh, just... I'm so sorry. Yeah, the, do you see that? She gestures to like the pot on the table where it's like there's a mound of coins. I'm very close to just taking all of their money. So just give me just one second. Very well, and she, uh, V's gonna back up a little bit and just watch the game. I would yeah. love to watch. Absolutely. Watch anyone who would game. like to. Yeah, anyone who would like to, uh, you can make me an insight or a perception check. Ooh, I'll go with the. Uh, let's give it a perception check. Go 19. Perception. 16. I got 9. 15. <laughs> yeah, 15, 19, 9, and There's 16. There's two sherries that are kicking in. I got a 9. 14. <laughs> 14. Anyone, uh, so it'll it'll be anyone with above a 15 here will notice that uh, Tarina is rather adept at cheating. She is pretty blatantly cheating, but it seems that the drunks at the table have not noticed that she's got cards in her sleeves <laughs> in that long cloak that she's wearing. I think I'm just going to watch uh, the games. Yeah, I don't sure. want to get involved. <laughs> uh, another hand goes down. Uh, so for those for those of you guys at home and, and those of you that would have lived here in Baldur's Gate, uh, Baldur's Bones is very similar to how we would play Blackjack in general. We would play it with dice as players here, but yeah, the goal is try to get to 21 in a certain amount of cards. Um, she basically wipes the floor with them and ends up uh, collecting a tidy sum of copper and silver pieces that are on the table. Upon completion of this, I assume you guys are just all standing behind here, behind her up here for like the last five minutes of her play. I think I'd be kind of leaning on a wall next to Francis, okay. maybe kind of narrating to ourselves what's going on. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Um, the the drugs are just oh and they they wave down one of the boys for another drink to try to you know drown their sorrows out of losing whatever their you know the last paycheck they had was um and Tarina turns around and has a large pouch full of her new money and right um well we can either use one of the private dining rooms up here or booth downstairs preference up here works yeah one of the private rooms if if possible Right. Uh, she like turns around and tries to find one of the the boys running around. And says, uh, Yemiya, Yemiya, uh, come here. And waves down one of these boys and uh, the key for the one, yeah, that one right there. Mhm. Mm yeah, Umber Hulk room. That one. Great. Perfect. So the south, they, he goes and opens the south side room, leading you into the apparently a private dining room known as the Umber Hulk room. There's a mounted head of an Umber Hulk hanging on the east wall, making it pretty clear why it was named as such. She walks in and plops down at one of the, uh, the seats at the head of a very long table. It's roughly 15 feet in length. And uh, she sits down and plops her, her coins down in front of her and says, So, Zaj, huh? Please come in, shut the door too, and 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 sit. So just to be clear, mm -hmm. 
I didn't tell. I couldn't tell she was cheating. Uh, anyone who did not roll above a fifteen or a fifteen and up was the, the okay. Roll. So I, I I would say that wasn't very nice of you. You might notice that uh, Cyrus's voice has changed slightly. She raises an eyebrow. Are you coming in? <laughs> I'll, I'll go in and sit. Mother. Yes, I will sit. Okay. Uh, does anyone shut the door? I, I guess the door. I would shut the door. Yeah. Bust one in. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, as you do so, the, the sounds of the, the tavern kind of fall away behind. It's a quieter room in here. Seems pretty well insulated, considering she she looks over, uh, over at Cyrus and says, What do you mean? I think you know exactly what I mean. But that taking their money uh, was fairly bet. You and I must have a very different definition of the word fair. I didn't pressure them into betting. Fairly bet. We bet under false circumstances, but that's not why I'm here. So I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, yes, uh, the, the reason why we're here today, uh, thank you for t taking time to speak to us, um, is Captain Zodge would like us to uh, eliminate some some individuals, and he says you owe him a favor, and they are the followers of the Dead Three, and you might know where to find them so that we can go and deal with them. Oh. I, in fact, do, which is convenient for, for you lot, and... Well, I guess I know a lot of things, so such would have figured it out eventually, but I have a deal for you. Before I tell you anything here, I owe him, but I don't necessarily owe you. There's this rumor that um, some of my former associates, uh, shipmates of mine, uh, they may have tracked me here to Baldur's Gate, and... Well, they are not keen on me continuing my life. So, uh, you stay here at the Elfsong Tavern, see if they show up, kill them all, and then we'll talk about what you need. Um, hmm. excuse me. You notice once again, Cyrus's voice has changed slightly. We work for the person you owe a favor to, we are him by proxy. You do not, we do not need to do things for you. Once you do what we ask, the favor has been paid. Ah, but if I may interject there, big fella, and I'll clap a hand on Cyrus's shoulder. Go. The problem that we face is if our source of information is somewhat dead, then they may not be able to provide us with the information. So I think that may be some form of leverage in her favor. Okay, how about this then? You give at least half of the money back to the people you swindled and will do your little task. I don't exactly revel in the prospect of killing people. Swindling? I would never... <laughs> Lies. Uh, rather adept at lying. It's kind of my job. F half? At least half. A quarter. These people have lives. They're thieves and pirates and vagabonds. They have... What, what are their lives? Uh, at least I can utilize this coin for... Nicer things. What did you do to make them want to kill you? Um, I, how about we get a round of drinks because I'm going to need one if we're going to stop talking about, you know, past mistakes. That doesn't really answer the question. <sighs> Give the people back a third. I mean it Fine. Fine. She pulls open the bag and begins counting out some of the coins there. 
a third. Can I tell if it's actually a third? Perception check. Oh gosh, perception. <laughs> hey, 22. 22. Yeah. It's a third-ish of what you can tell from the bag not having it in your hands. I guess I will be the one to deliver it since it was my demand. Oh, good. Uh, and can you get us a round of drinks then, too, since you're up and about? Sure. Coins in your hand if you need to use it. Sure. I'll go return the money to the people that I uh, saw previously. Uh, yeah. Tell them yeah, the table. Uh, they're, they're bemoaning their losses and drinking beer together. <laughs> Fortune has shined upon both of you. This appears to be back to the second voice that Cyrus took on. Are you an angel? <laughs> You're so pretty. Thank you. Um, sure, let's say that. And this angel is telling you... Archie. To, to not... Archie, it's an angel. It's a real... Lo it kind of like reaches out. This is grizzled man. He's heavily scarred and definitely drunk. And he reaches out to try and just like, see if you're really there. His friend Archie is sitting across from him. He's like, I can't believe it. It's a real it's... life angel here. In Baldur's Gate, we're saved. Oh, bless us yeah, be. The way, the way I save you, the way, the way I save you is by um, putting you onto the correct path. Uh, Stop gambling. The woman who uh, you gambled with, she's not the nicest of person, and when you gamble, you lose. Oh. Even if you win, sometimes you lose, so take this right. money. Right. Yeah. And don't gamble it away. Yeah. Don't gamble it away. Archie, we drank it away. That... <gasps> <laughs> we drank it away? Oh, you're point, so smart! At, at that point, I walk away. <laughs> yeah. There's I'm no like, saving these two. Mm -hmm. There's there's no saving them. They're the ones really Wait, descending Angel. into a furnace. <laughs> Angel. Oh, he's gone. He's gone. I go back into the room. Yeah. Uh, drinkless? Or did you yeah, make a drink course, order? Of course, drinkless. Okay. <laughs> she, she sees you coming. What? No drinks? I, I thought we were going to have a conversation and some drinks. And and she, she pulls off the hood as you shut the door behind you. She's like, and show everyone what we really look like. She looks pointedly at the other hooded <laughs> individual in the room. Oh, like you to those uh. gentlemen, I lied. Now, the lies are even. My name's Cyrus. And Cyrus, I apparently work with the fish. You're an asshole. I wanted a drink. But most important, take the hood off. Apparently, we're all going to be friends today. Um, she looks at the, did you close the door behind you? Yep. Okay. Um, she looks around and, uh, okay. And so she's going to take off her hood and, uh, there you get to see a me mechanized person. It's a, there's a, it's very womanly figure. Uh, she has very like a silver blue tint to her skin, her metal, uh, she has a bald head, but large, high elf ears. Um, she has very uh, bright green eyes and uh, adorning all of her skin. So besides the silver blue kind of color is almost like a tattooed etching mark of blue, uh, blue little tattoos that go all across her entire body and especially over her, her bald head. Um, and she pulls it down um, and, and takes off her cloak. Um, she has a whole full mechanized body. Um, you can see the etchings go completely all the way down there. It's like a, it's more like a crystal bright blue uh, in the etchings. And then there is a very noticeable letter V on her, uh, on her high left arm. And uh, she's like, well, um, so, so this is me. Uh... Well, aren't Whoa. you a curiosity? Uh... What are you? <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. And and you talk. Uh, yes. You look like Clank downstairs. You know the mechanized armor guy. Wait, it has a name. But oh, it's Clank. Uh, Interesting. Kind of, I'm. 
I don't know. I don't really know what I am. I My father created me. You have um, a father? Does it mean you have a mother as well? I, I used to have a father. Oh. And, um, well, uh, I'm different from Clank, you called him, um, downstairs. I, I can, I have a personality and I can speak and, uh, I can fight. Can you feel? He says as I, like, <sighs> poke him as if a child. Just, I'm like, I don't, what? Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I can feel that. I, the only thing I'm lacking is a sense of taste and touch. So, um, that's why I didn't drink earlier. I don't really need to. I can't hmm. taste it anyway. Hmm. And it's your oh. first day in the gate. Yes. It's your first um, day? How'd you get in? My my father was a well-known artificier, and uh, he had some connections that after he passed, I was able to uh, get in through those. Interesting. Temple of Gond, maybe? All those crazy gearheads over there. Uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, it's It's been quite a travel. <laughs> and my dear, until we have figured out a little bit more of your ongoing circumstance, I might be so bold as to suggest you place your hood up again. Uh, you are quite a vision, but you may attract attention that you do not desire. Yes, my my father wanted me to, especially around others, since I'm so unique to not attract attention. Mm. Uh, I can still fight with the cloak on, though. Oh yes, we're quite adept at that. I'll cock a sly grin at Francis. I'll say, yes, I, I think it might be for the best until we figure out something perhaps subtler. Something we, we can aid you with, but for now, the cloak may be our best option. Okay, Hugo. And uh, she's gonna put her cloak back on. Hmm. Now, I did not think I'd see this today. Hmm. Well, you know what? Even without the drinks, I think that's worth it. It's story time. Gather round, gather round. So, before retiring here to Baldur's Gate, um, I may have been a pirate um, known as Rhonda Thunderbell. Not my real name, much like Tarina's. Okay not my real name. Um, but after, I, I, I served some time with Captain Mersoko uh, Seshbrin of the Uncivil Serpent. A couple of months or so. Um, just long enough to case the place and uh, loot it and get away. And, um, well, I've spent a lot of it in the recent years and uh, well, they seem to have tracked me down here and are still really angry about it. So that's where you come in. It, if they're so dangerous, why not just leave? You can't no get out can of leave. Baldur's Gate. We're stuck in here. We're all rats I piled atop each other. It is a large city, though. Why not hide? Oh, I mean, if you are going to say no to this and make Zodge exceptionally mad about not getting the information, oh, then sure. We aren't sure. going to say no, but curious. It's almost as though perhaps it's you who wants your old crew dead. Who, me? No, never. Hmm. How many? How many of them are there, exactly? Uh, I, I mean, of the full crew... Probably 20 or so, enough to do pilot a full ship and the captain. How many would they send after me? I, well, I can't imagine they'd leave the ship unguarded. So maybe and half. He wants us to kill all of them. That would be preferable, yes. Then I don't have to worry about it ever again. That'd be nice. That'd be really nice. And they've done horrible things to other people. Oh, right. of course. Many horrible things. They're pirates! What is the name of the ship you sailed on again? Uh, the Uncivil Serpent. Hmm. 
and the reputation of this ship would be known. Would you like to roll to see if you know the reputation of the ship of the Uncivil Serpent? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take a roll at it. Sure, why not? The, absolutely. Uh, it's probably going to be history of okay, some sure. kind to see if you, if That's you know it. That's a flat zero. It's all in the hands of oh. the gods. Let's go. Mm. Yes, do it. Nine. That's a nine. Uh, it's a I ship. Mean, <laughs> it's a ship. <laughs> it, it sounds like the name of a pirate ship, right? You know, that doesn't sound like a merchant ship of any kind that you know of, but you don't really know the the tales of the uncivil, ser well, uncivil serpent. What I was going to do was I, I would say to Tarina, I go, actually, you know what? This does sound like a, a bit of a long story. So I will go get those drinks, perhaps. Oh, good. Wonderful. Uh, ale for me, please. I've Marvelous. had quite a few harder drinks already. Okay, very well. And I will head straight downstairs to my old pal, Alan. And I will go up to him and I'll say, Alan, okay. I... I don't suppose you've ever yes. heard of a ship called the Uncivil Serpent. I might. Why? There may be some form of ruckus occurring. Ruckus. Soon. That may be to do Happens. with this ship. However, it may okay. be one that we can avoid should we gain any further information to illuminate the scenario at hand, if you catch my drift. Uh, well, I don't know much about the Uncivil Serpent, other than that it is uh, currently moored uh, at the east side of the harbor. It's, Do they allow here. pirates to moor in the harbor? You lived in Baldur's Gate quite a while, son. I feel like you would understand that yes, yes, they would. I don't spend much time around the docks, I'm afraid. Very well. That's probably for the best. It's mm. rather dangerous down there. Yes, we've always thought it so. Okay. Do you don't know anything of the ship or the crew's reputation? Uh, the captain. Uh, Deadeye, I believe, is the name. But um, other than that, I mean... Uh, well... There's rumors that Deadeye didn't come by the captain's ship... Um, well, rightly. Uh, hmm. Mutiny, I believe, yeah. is the pirate term. Uh, it, I don't know when it occurred, but I've, I've heard some say, you know, hear a lot of things. I also hear that he doesn't like to bathe. So keep that in mind, I guess. Hmm. What a putrid yet necessary detail. Thank you. Hmm. Yeah. Very well. It's oh, not all the uh, information I have. I'll have, I'll have an ale, please. No, not just a singular one. Uh, why don't you make it five? Wonderful. Uh, ales are significantly cheaper. You'll probably pay two copper a piece for this, sure. so like a ten copper total. Not that it actually matters. He's, I'll send one of the boys up. Uh, they, they told me you're in the uh, Umber Hulk room. Uh, that that, right? That's right, yes. Perfect. Yeah, oh, I'll nice. have them up in a bit. Very he well. turns around to begin pouring. I'll, uh, I'll head back up, and I'll just go Excellent. back in and inform. Drinks are on the way. Has Okay. While our friend was missing, was did anyone want to talk to our new former pirate friend or each other? I want to uh, chat to do V, if I may. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. <clears throat> you're you're quite a marvel to look at. It's it's very beautiful, whatever you're made out of. Thank you. It's it's my father's handiwork. He did it himself. And the name or the the letter V does it stand uh, for anything? Um. I was told I I was the fifth one uh, in the design work, and there, there's only one other like me that was successful. The, uh, the first three attempts were failures. There are more. But that's... B is the nickname my father gave me. Is it a name you're happy with, or would you rather uh, choose a real name? Well, uh, I wasn't... I, I have a real name, I just... It's between me and my father for now. I just met you guys. I hope you understand. Of, of course. No, no means pry or anything. Just it, fascinated is all. Yeah, no, it's... it's uh, the name my mother got me, but... Um, I prefer my nickname just for those that 
before I become friends with you guys uh, or whatever it is. I, friends, maybe? Uh, um, yeah. Who knows? <laughs> so, Tarina kind of laughs. She's like, as a, well, someone who uses many different aliases, I absolutely understand. That is, should be, use it as long as you need to. It keeps your name safe. That's what my father said. So, um, Rowan, um, you said you were new here as well, right? Um, new to the, the, the lower city. I spend most of my life in the upper city. Recently relocated. <laughs> what is the upper city like? Um, it's, it's a lot, uh, cleaner, um, a little bit more orderly. Uh, you know, it's it's still got its rebel rousers and troublemakers and, and things like that, but uh, so it's far cry from the lower city life. I see. Um, sorry, my staring, Cyrus. I'm still. I, I've seen a few humans and other elves outside of the shop, but I've never seen someone that looks like you before. My mother and father told me I was special. They seem to just be like uh, most other people. I was born very pale. My skin was white. Or my, my hair was white. There's is pretty raven black, actually. I was actually born with these little... Let's call them tattoos. I don't suppose any of you can read it. Oh, it's a, it's a language? I take a close look at Cyrus's tattoos. <laughs> uh, the, tattoo, Cyrus, the tattoos yeah. are in Celestial. I can read them. Yeah. I wanted to know if anyone else could. Does anyone know Celestial? No. I do not. No one at the table seems to be able to read those tattoos. They seem that maybe they're just weird special runes. But for most of my life, I've just lived with my uh, my mom and dad on the farm. I said they were protecting me and stuff, but well, I just I, I felt the urge to 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 do more, to to go where other people were and help out, I guess. And essentially, as soon as I arrived in uh, around the outer cities of uh, Baldur's Gate. I was drafted. I thought that I would be like a town guard type person. I've seen a lot more punching than I have seen policing, which is not exactly what I signed up for. Some would argue they're one and the same. <laughs> I prefer to, uh, whenever possible, make people unable to fight in a less permanent fashion, but there's been one time that I've come close to needing to use <laughs> I just I just peer at my, my birch stick and like mm -hmm. uh, a little bit more aggressively than usual. Um. Anyway, I'm, I'm just a normal person like everybody else. I just happen to look different. Like, kind of, kind of like you, V. We're, we're, we're people. We're just a little, we're a little different. Yeah, you're right. Um, it's nice to think about. F Francis, uh, what is that stick on your back? I've been looking at it for a little while now. Oh, that's my my flute. I it's a musical instrument that I play from time to time. Uh, forget, forgive me. My my father didn't have any musical instruments in his shop. Can you play it? Oh, allow me. I shall play just a short ditty for you, shall I? And I'll flip around and play a, a, a short, happy tune. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, this seems to apparently prompt the uh, the spirit in the bar that lives here to. Uh, Sing their song, Ooh. Um, as is somewhat customary in in the bar here. Most people fall silent. And Tarina looks around. And says, oh, she's—they're doing the thing. It's doing the the thing again. 
Does anyone know Elvish that's in here? I know I, I that we have Elvish. one he person does. that does. I, I speak Elvish. Me Everyone. Too. Wow, that's crazy. Oh, okay. I do not. I mean, I have to use. <laughs> yeah. no, Everyone in the weird languages. Looking. Yeah. Uh, I, I think probably uh, at, at this point, as well, we have Hugo like re-entering the room rather quietly. Hugo, you understand this. To be it's, like... it's a little bit of like a solemn occasion when this kind of thing <laughs> happens. Um, it, you can understand the lyrics if you speak Elvish. It laments an unnamed lover lost at sea. It, it kind of goes on for a while, and you like maybe place the the drinks around the bar, and Tarina gives you a small quiet nod. It's like one of the only times she's not been talking the entirety of the time that she's been around here. Um, but it does eventually fade away as uh, the lament ends and the tavern picks up again, the gambling resumes and uh, the people around the bar resume their, their merrymaking or drowning their sorrows in drink. I promise that doesn't happen every time I enter a room. But it was <laughs> quite beautiful. It was. Wiped a tear from my eye. Beautiful. Mm. That sound was so unique. It was singing in Elvish. Beautiful language. I don't know it. Uh, it sounded like gibberish to me, man. <laughs> well, perhaps I'll teach you it one Beautiful day. Beautiful gibberish. <laughs> it would take a while, though. Mm -hmm. uh, basic summary is uh, she is her lover went off to sea and um, never returned and she waited and waited and waited until she died and he never returned a song about loss really everything yeah. seems so depressing here oh you could see it that way or you could see it as a song of devotion perhaps Right. Perhaps their and love was that strong. Lovely ale. That's not depressing. That's delicious. And Trina will raise a, a glass and be like, to my new murderous friends. And we'll uh, drink the drink. Uh, V's gonna kind of like intently look at Hugo and like the drinking. Um, uh, H Hugo, could yes. you tell me? Can I'll you wipe describe... like a foam mustache. <laughs> Could you describe how that tasted? Well, forgive me for being rather rude, V, but you've never tasted anything, have you? No, uh, no, I have not. Can you smell things? No, I cannot. But you can feel things, yes? Yes. It's a somewhat strong feeling. Tangy, you could say, like you've touched something very cold at first in your mouth, and then it slowly warms and there's an earthy, pleasurable taste there. Sort of a warm, soft taste. That's why people like it so much. However, the drinks we had earlier, the sherries, if you may remember, that is a much harsher taste, like a breath of fresh air, but... The most corrupting fresh air you can imagine. Still rather nice, though. It leaves you with a warming feeling in your chest afterwards. Forgive me if my descriptions are not adequate, but it's a somewhat difficult task at hand. No, you're far more description than my father. Thank you. That's quite all right. Now, to the rather sordid business at hand. Tarina. Yes. Right. When we do you expect agreement? these... Well... And, uh, I'm going to speak in thieves' cant to Tarina. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say, I'm going to assume you can understand this. She raises an eyebrow and gives you a small nod. She goes, We can't understand it, right? No. <laughs> I'm going to it say, It is actual gibberish. Okay. I'm going to say, in addition to our deal, you're not to inform anyone of V's presence or what you've seen of her today. If we're in agreement, then all is well. Roll me a persuasion check. Okay. 16. 16. She kind of like narrows her eyes at you. I narrow respond, my eyes back. Responds <laughs> and thieves can. She's fine. 
But if asked directly, I will have to answer. And I'll say, with the most narrow of eyes, slightly more narrow than hers, I'll say, We're very well. <laughs> Just getting closer and closer. <laughs> Just blinking at each other. I'll, yeah. I'll say, very well, but it really wouldn't be worth your time. And then I'll switch back into, uh, into common and I'll say, mm. well, seems like all is well. Um, what's well? Uh, what's the plan exactly here? Well, we must protect Tarina. Or the information she provides will serve the greater good. And we must have it. Okay, so we just wait until they show up? Tarina? Yeah, I suppose so. Uh, the rumors I've heard, they'll, uh... Well, they'll be here probably this afternoon. So you might just want to... Grab another drink, maybe do a little bedding, um, take in the atmosphere. Yeah, they'll be here eventually. I, though, am going to go have a nap. So this has been fun. Uh, thank you for the drink. I will see you after they're dead. Just to clarify, do they have to die? Yes, I would much prefer that. Mm-hmm. I guess they are pirates. Because it's either me or them, right? Either I die because they've killed me, or they die and you get the information that you want. Fine. Good. Uh, I'm in the room across the way. If you need anything, please hesitate to knock. I will be sleeping. <laughs> She's going to pick up the large glass of ale that is, she still has some to drink of and will walk out the door, leaving the door open where the rest of the bar uh, sounds start flooding in a little bit more heavily and walks across to a door across the way and slams it shut. <laughs> so how do we want to play this then? Just ambush them when they come in or does anyone have any other ideas? How will we recognize them, though? Is, isn't that something we should figure out? Well, if they're pirates, eye patches, peg legs. Apparently that captain smells quite bad as well. Do you think the captain would show well, not. For what it's worth, I don't really know much about pirate behavior. He may wish to take his leave, if he's been at sea for some time. I won't be able to help you with that description. True. Have you even seen a pirate before? No. Keep an eye out for one legs, wooden, eye patch, curvy swords, that kind of thing. They like stripes as well. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Very well. Um, so we have some time before they arrive. Certainly seems so. Does anyone know how to play that game she was playing earlier? I would like to learn. Alder's Bones? It's a rather simple game. I'm not particularly well versed in it, though. What about you, Francis? Uh, yeah, all from a, like, a, a out-of-game perspective, I am proficient with a playing card set, so I oh, assume I would you know absolutely how to... know how to play the game, yeah. then. Yes. Yeah, I'm proficient uh, with dice, yes. so. <laughs> I, I know it quite well. I can... Shall we play a few rounds? That'd be nice. Yes, Just, let's. Um, okay. Do you guys I want to play? I prefer not to in bet here, anything or? if that's fine. Did you guys want to play? In, yeah, we'll in play the, in the, the private, private room. room I still? think. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Uh, so the way that this game is played, uh, you will each agree upon what the bet is. You'll put the agreed upon amount in the pot. If you're not betting, obviously it doesn't matter. You'll each then roll three dice. The play would proceed clockwise around said table. We can decide just who goes when who goes. Um, the host of the game, again, who cares? Uh, we'll go last. On your turn, you can choose to stand or roll again. If you stand, the next player takes their turn. A player who rolls takes the ad an additional die and rolls it. If the die uh, exceeds the number 21, they are bust and they're out of the game. Otherwise, keep rolling additional die until you stand or bust. Once everyone has a turn, the highest point total, excluding players who busted, wins the game and takes the pot. So it's Blackjack with dice. I didn't think we were actually going to play. <laughs> Sounds simple enough. I'm like, okay, let's go. <laughs> I have rules. 
I know. Yeah, I, mean... I was very impressed. <laughs> let's play. Let's play. But okay. What are, what are we right. betting? We say uh, silver a piece to start. Why not? Okay. Sure. I'll uh, I'll put a silver down and get my right. dice set out, and I'll hand everyone dice. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> um. So yeah, you you've got the the dice out. Uh. Let's let's say that. Uh. Francis, knowing the game, would be the quote-unquote host, so you will go last. Okay. Uh, but everyone puts a silver in, and uh, we'll proceed clockwise around the, the table for whoever is playing. Um, so who would like to go first? It will just me. say this is clockwise. Absolutely. Roll me 3d6, please. Eh. Sorry, I'm dealing with a dog at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Give them pats for me, and then roll the dice. 12. Okay, uh, 12. So you rolled a 12, and now you get to be like, hmm, do I stand, or do I roll another die? I would like to roll another die. Do you roll another d6? Just one? Mm-hmm. It's like drawing another card. <laughs> so now you're at 13. Do you want to stand or one. roll another die? I'm going to roll another one. Heck yeah. <laughs> 14. <laughs> do you want to stand, or do you want to roll another die? I'm going to roll again. Heck yeah. Oh. Three. Okay, so 17 total. Standard roll. I'm gonna roll again. Heck yeah. Go the for six it. Six is coming. Yep. Two. Ooh. Okay, 19 total. I will stand. All right, so remember your number 19. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say that V is uh, the okay. clockwise person here. So roll me 3d6, please. All right. 11. 11. Would you like to stand or roll again? I will roll. Yeah, roll me a d6. 13. 13, I'll keep going. Fifth, uh, what, 16? 16, I'll keep going. Oh, 20. A 20. 20. I will stand. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, and who is, uh, okay, this would mean that Hugo is next. Okay, I shall roll my 3d6. I rolled a 13. Okay. I shall roll again. 16. 16. Mm. And then with 16, I'll cock an incredibly smug eyebrow at everyone else and go, observe. Oh. <laughs> 19. Ooh. 19. I'm going to do it again. 22. Oh, oh you bust. <laughs> and Unfortunately. I'll, I'll slam out a grin and I'll go, and as you can see, with the highest score, I have won. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. Excellent. Is, is uh, that how you play? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, Cyrus, were you involved in this game? I was not. Okay. Uh, and this leaves us with Francis as the last one to try and okay. eke out a win over a 20. Uh, all right. Here's my 3d6. 11. I'll roll again. Uh, 17. I'll roll again. Uh-huh. 19. 19. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> there it is, a bus. <laughs> 25. <Nice. laughs> oh, well, that's a, you, you win, V. Oh, uh, what, what does they say? Uh, beginner's luck, right? Uh, that More must than be right. <laughs> I think I see that. that yeah, as V collects their winnings off of the table, all uh, the original silver and the three other, again, the elf begins to sing. But this time, it's not the same song. It's always the same song. Hugo, you would know this is being incredibly odd. It sings a song about El Terrell. Sing a song of El Terrell, of water, woods, and hill. The sun dawns on her ruddy cliffs in the fields green and still. This land of long abiding joy, home of the strong and brave, renowned by all across the realms and never once a slave. Oh, sing a song of El Terrell when foes are at her door, her fields torn by cloven feet from some infernal shore. Arise the mighty hell riders, take up your swift keen swords and charge into the hellish fray and scatter devil hordes. Oh, sing a song of El Terrell and when the night does fall, Sleep safe beneath the companion's light until the dawn does call. 
we're bound by mortal covenant that only ends with death. And so we'll sing of El Terrell until our final breath. And I think at that point, we will take a uh, short Ooh. break and uh, find out what happens next. As we come back in to our little game here, the haunting song ends and it was different. Those of you that had not been to the Elf Song Tavern might just, maybe this is just a song that the elf sometimes sings, but at least one of our players here knows that this is in entirely wrong well i would actually I, I would just say while the song was going on i would kind of in, in shock kind of quietly be uh almost like translating line after line for cyrus as the elf sings mm. and then i just say i've never heard that before something's not right that song was not about love and devotion it's about Not death all. and decay. I mean, I like that. It was it was hauntingly beautiful. I, I got goosebumps hearing it, but singing of Elturel. Yeah, it's strange that the song would be about it when it's fallen so recently. Surely, no coincidence. Hmm. <laughs> It spoke of things not often spoken of in song. I believe there were hordes of devils mentioned. To hear of that in this world is unusual. Ooh. I think I might take one of those drinks now. Might not be a bad idea. From downstairs, you hear a commotion of some kind and a voice it kind of muffled through the thing as Rowan finally takes one of those drinks and Tarina are you here well, duty calls I think well uh, it seems that we won't have any issues figuring out who the assailants are I think you might be right it seem like it <clears throat> Remember, we don't necessarily have to fight them. That's what they have to say first. But wouldn't Tarina's not going to uphold her end, will she, unless they're dead? Hmm. Perhaps we can make her think they're dead. And they can be long gone. I'm simply saying, okay. sometimes bloodshed can be averted. Okay. You know, Hugo... I wasn't sure about you at first, but I appreciate your value of life. Thank you, Cyrus. I'm a man of most practical means, but that does not mean I am without compassion. Well, uh, we'll follow your lead then. Very well. Okay. Francis, <clears throat> seems as though we have guests to greet. And with that, I'll open the door of the, uh, the Umber Hulk room and Make towards the make towards the stairs. Yeah. So you guys head on head on downstairs. Uh, does anyone stay up or does everyone go? Everyone go. Everyone <laughs> go. Everyone everyone go. Like, I just. I'm just yep. I just want to know. Like, like, right. some chests. Maybe I'm just going to go for some lock boxes. Okay. Yeah. Any <laughs> some <laughs> bones. <laughs> Someone's just like, no nah, dog, I'm not going, and then just be done. <laughs> I'm gonna have a nap yeah. with Tarina. It's fine. <laughs> I feel like that's a good way to wake up with a dagger in your throat. <laughs> Tarina and I are going to just hang out for a little you? bit. It's totally fine. Uh, yeah. So as you guys make your way down the stairs, you do observe this. Eight motley humans saunter into the tavern. The leader seems to be a brawny man with a cloudy right eye, a cruel sneer, and pirate swagger, which is apparently a thing. The others are rather unsavory, rowdy bunch who act as if they own the place as they barge into Alan's bar here. We're looking for an old friend of ours, says the dead-eyed man. He sniffs the air and goes, I can smell her. Apparently her, name, her name's Tarina now. Loves to cheat at Boulder's Bones. Hello. Hello, and who might you be? My name's Hugo, and these are my associates, and... 
We are associates of Tarina herself, although it seems like you may know her under a different name. Now, she is here, and she is concerned, I think it's safe to say, that you've come here to do her some degree of harm. However, you seem like a most reasonable chap, so I'm sure that's not the case. Mm, I can be reasonable for a price. And what might that price be? 5,000 gold. Now, you're being reasonable, but for quite an unreasonable price. So, well, have you considered- Maybe I just want her dead. Why do you want her dead so much? She stole from us! And he, like, languishes out in ours. Stole from all of us! Stole from the ship, stole from the former, partly, the, the, the defeated captain. Oh, as he fell away, his last dying words were, Dawn that to Rina. And so we are here for vengeance. Are you going to keep that from me and the boys here? Yeah? He looks around and they all, uh, they look pretty perturbed. Well, I'm going to look back towards the group and raise an eyebrow. Any thoughts? Are we going to keep it from this band of gentlemen? I, for one, could use some banana bread. <laughs> 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 that's, our, that's our code word for everybody attack suddenly in our everybody previous go. campaign. Oh, is that our, our ban yeah. Yeah, banana bread? Yeah, we're we, we once yeah, had we're a... Banana bread we, we once had a... <laughs> We're in need of a code word. And banana bread is it. So yeah, I think uh, after yeah, looking at the group, I'll draw my rapier. Why not? Sure. Same. And uh, <laughs> well, let's uh, let's just see. Let's see what's going on here in the Elf Song Tavern. Welcome to the tavern, everyone. It's a little crowded in here, much more so Ooh. with a band of pirates being involved. But I will need some initiatives rolled, please. Um, and for those of you that are practiced at this, I'm just going to remind because I always have people forget. Do please click your token before you click the initiative button so that will populate automatically into the tracker there and so we have uh, a bunch of our our new friends being involved here the uh the gentleman up, uh, up front right here is the one with the dead eye and menacing nature the rest of these around um they all look kind of just like dwarves with black beards here on this uh, pay no mind that's just the bandit token uh, so they're just being bandits and uh, then there's a lot of what would look like just random women around the map. Yeah, those are commoner tokens. Those are just commoners. <laughs> All right. And so we uh, let's find out where we begin as I get this last one. Sorry, Joel, who are the three the chaps to our here. north? Uh, these are some, uh, let's call them thuggish looking gentlemen. Excellent. Uh, rather tough looking. Uh, but yeah, the thug token. <laughs> so, <laughs> for some diversity's sake. Right. So this brings up, Cyrus, you're the first to, uh, banana bread away, my friend. It is your turn. You see uh, targets in front of you here. What would you like to do? So just to be clear. Mm -hmm. Ugly beard, very obvious. Mm. Only the women are the common, and the, the armor thing. Those are the uh, only people we don't fight? So these guys up here, uh, all of these, uh, they're all, they're they're just patrons. All of the hooded women are patrons. Okay. Uh, armor armor guy, that's Clank. Yeah. And this is, this this commoner token here is technically Alan. Alan's okay. back here. But uh, yeah, Very other than that. If, clientele in this spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They all, they all look very similar. <laughs> Uh, patrons of the Elf Song just really enjoy Elf Song, and they all look the same because of it. I guess it's the cosplay. Um, yeah. So I'll let you know if you're like, I want to attack this particular person. I'm like, that's okay. That's a commoner. We'll that's let that Trudy. slide. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hurt them, please. Uh, but yeah, what would you like to do? I would like to shimmy around. Oh my goodness! When I move my token, I can see different things. Indeed. I like to shimmy around there. And you have uh, a visual radius. I would like to give a good thwacking. Yeah, to, so you uh, ugly man. duck between your two allies here, uh, and you both like feel Cyrus, the breeze of Cyrus moving past you here. Maybe uh, these cloak flutters spectacularly as he does so, and you will give them a, a, a thwacking. Uh, so go ahead and roll me some attack here. Uh, so yeah, uh, do I have to hit with that? Let me just double check. Uh, 
if you're looking you to use do the attack your... action. Okay, no, I, I just mm -hmm. I just have to use the attack. Just action. have to use the attack. So yeah, action. so I'm gonna I'm gonna pop them with my quarter staff or attempt to, and then uh, punch them with the back of my hand. Okay, yeah, you thwack out with the quarter staff, and you note that uh, this 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 captain scimitar is already out of its sheath and turning away uh, your staff rather easily. Uh, you then attempt to strike him, and he just begins to laugh at you. You've he's just blocked both of your blows. Incredibly rude. <laughs> Well, I've got nothing else for you yet. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, we have a lot of a lot. Wow. Oh goodness. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that they had rolled so very high. Very well. <laughs> uh, yeah, this one is going to run up this direction. Uh, let's put him. Let's put him deep in here. He's going to make an attack at Francis here with his scimitar, yelling at you. Rah! He rolls a nine, so we're not going to worry about that. Uh, Deadeye here, though, seems uh, fully interested in handling Cyrus, so he is going to make an attack with his uh, scimitar here. Uh, he makes two attacks and rolls a 16 on one of them for a three slashing damage against Cyrus. How do ties work? I always forget. He uh, rolls a succeed. Yeah. So if, if I meet 16, I beat your AC. If you meet the AC, you, you get the hit. Okay, so my AC is 16, so I do get I do take three. Yes. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Uh, that's what he does there. And then we've got a bunch of these. Wow, I have way too many of these guys. This guy's going to use a crossbow and is going to shoot at Francis. Let's see oh, what happens no. here. He whips out a crossbow. Uh, and he does hit. That's a 22 for three piercing damage against Francis. Ouch. Uh, this one in the back is going to stand up on the table to get a better vantage point. Is going to shoot the back line here uh, at Rowan with a crossbow. Jeez, uh, I apparently am going to roll very well today because that's a twenty, Rowan, uh, yeah, for for two piercing damage here uh, as you take a, a crossbow <laughs> bolt to the shoulder, and this guy here is going to run up and around, shoving this guy out of the way, and uh, attacks V with the scimitar. Uh, that is a ten, so V, you are able to duck out of the way very nimbly and now it is your turn to uh, maybe counterattack this gentleman here um well i i'm actually going to there's going to be uh a square box that's gonna be coming out of one of her sleeves and she's going to just kind of throw it on the floor um and she's gonna actually cast fairy fire um okay. so that'll affect Anyone that's in a 20 foot range. She has a fairy fire yes. grenade. <laughs> yeah. Literally. You just dropped it on your <laughs> feet just... here. She's putting uh, so the it'll affect lights everyone in the in the area here. Mm -hmm. Uh oh goodness gracious. I have a thing for this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna we're gonna wait because I have that's a thing okay. for this. Oh, okay. Uh should it's affect be... everyone. Is there a save? Sorry, on fire? Yes, there is uh so it's a dexterity saving throw. Um oh boy. Is a 20 foot radius, correct? Yeah, so I figured I oh should put God. it like right, yeah, like start in the center here and then, cause it'll hit everyone if it goes like right there. I think I have the correct yeah. radius here. Looks about yeah, it's right. Close. I think it's all, yeah, it's just, it's yeah, there, there, that's perfect. <laughs> oh my God, it's even one it's more bar. square. Holy yeah, crap. So it'll hit basically everyone involved. <laughs> uh, I think wow. One more, I all think right. it's this one, yeah, that's okay. It's fine. Oh, do you, oh, we wanna, you wanna move it over one? Slightly, so slightly over, just so it hits you that guy. It. Yeah, yeah, Perfect. Absolutely, so it hits literally all of the enemies, which is great for you guys, Correct. but I also need dexterity saving throws from, from everyone. everyone. What is your spell save DC? Um, oh. My spell save DC is 13. Okay. Cyrus and I in the Matrix. I get hit. Francis did well. <laughs> we have, I, we I have got chaos too. involved, she doesn't know. It's fine. Uh, all right, so for those of you guys, uh, let's see. So it looks like Rowan failed, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark. Rowan, you're gonna get a little little red marker here for you. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm gonna roll all of these in a row here to see what happens. Okay. okay, that guy. And then we're gonna go around one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, okay, looks like big dude fails the dexterity saving throw. I don't really know how you avoid fairy fire in general, but that's totally okay. Uh, this guy is also going to get marked. The next one saved, the next one saved. The next one uh, saved, and this guy also failed. Okay, only two of them, but also big guy failed. So that's kind of the the whole of your fairy fire there. Excellently done. All right. Okay. That is so, your action. You have movement and bonus action remaining. What would you like to do? Um, just just letting my allies know what it does. 
Uh, any attack roll against the affected creature or an object has uh, advantage for the attacker. So uh, it would be good to Rowan to stay back a little bit, but attack <laughs> the people that had dots on them. Yes, absolutely. Yep, thank you. Uh, it is a concentration spell, so actually Correct. I should probably just bring that back. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. All right. Fire! Uh, so, um, cool. She's and in, uh, you can end it whenever you would like. So uh V's gonna end her turn, but she's gonna look towards Alan and say, uh, it doesn't actually burn anything, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh this is twenty foot cube, so apparently I did the radius wrong, but that's fine. This is a giant grenade of fairy fire. And uh there you go. So do you wanna try and move any at all here or Um I would I don't wanna take the attack of opportunity, so I'm just gonna hang out. Okay. That's my turn. Uh, this guy over here is going to jump up on the bar, which Alan's like, hey, don't do that. And then is going to uh, shoot uh, a crossbow bolt here at Hugo. Uh, it is a 21 for three piercing damage, that Hugo. certainly hits. I take three. Oh, uh, this seven. guy who is all, all alit is going to also jump on the table and attempt to attack V here uh, with a scimitar action. Uh, that is a nine, so no, does not hit. All right, Hugo, it is your turn. We're finally at our, our player portion of this entire initiative <laughs> roll, so please, Hugo, enlighten me on what you would like to do. First, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn to my right and see Rowan covered in sparkling fairy fire and looking a little bit shocked with a crossbow <laughs> bolt sticking out the shoulder. I'm just gonna go, don't, don't worry, Rowan. They'll rue the day they stood against Hugo, master uh, guardsman. Don't worry about it. Anyway. I'm going to turn back with my rapier and go, excellent work, Francis. Keep him distracted. And I'm going to stab the pirate in front of Francis, who I think swung it in with a scimitar. Yes, absolutely. Okay, I'm going to stab him with my rapier. That is a 10. That is a 10, which unfortunately does not sink through the leather armor that these bandits Ugh. are wearing, or pirates, I suppose, are wearing. Alas. Oh, do I risk it for the biscuit? I, I would absolutely. I'm going to risk it. I'm going to take a step back which mm -hmm. i imagine he might swing at me uh he will certainly try to yes okay he rolls a nine so uh, yeah you, you get away scot-free here and uh, i'm gonna jump up like onto the the midpoint of the stairs assuming yes. I, I i assume there's like a like a uh, banister i can fire over realistically mm -hmm. okay and i'm just yes. gonna use my object interaction to just like whip my longbow out and i'll end my turn there okay perfect francis what would you like uh, to do? You uh, have a lot of enemies around you. <laughs> I would like to... I'm just going to... The guy in front of me, I'm just going to try and hit my rapier to start with. Um, so that's a 20, non-natural. Um, yeah, we yeah we take those. Uh, for 11 piercing. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, so where your friend Hugo failed, uh, you succeed. We'll just say maybe Hugo softened him up a little bit. Uh, he dies as your rapier sinks very deeply through his chest and comes out the other side. And he, goes, <gasps> and he slides off your blade. Okay, and then, um, well, now that he's dead, I'm going to move away, actually. And I will follow the route that Hugo took and also move up to the stairs and just turn this okay. up. Marvelous idea. <laughs> Stand back from the fray. You stay out uh, the way, though. <laughs> and then I will actually use my bardic inspiration to okay. inspire Rowan. Ooh. Okay, perfect. What does that so do again? Just remind me. Uh, so you get a d20 that you can use for uh, within the next no, 10 minutes. No, you get minutes. a d, not a d20. Six. Sorry, yeah, not a d. I meant, I, I meant a, a d6 on any a d20. A d20 would be yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> be pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> my, so, my bad. Okay, so d6 I can use for an attack roll? Uh, anytime uh, you roll a d20 is the... Oh, okay. Okay, cool. cool. For the next 10 minutes. But it's single All use. All right. Is. Francis, are you good? That's me. I'm done. Excellent. All right, we have another... Another pirate here who is going to probably rush up and try to prove themselves to the Captain Deadeye and slay Cyrus here, the glowing boy in the center here. But uh, he rolls a seven, so Cyrus is able to parry the blow away rather deftly. This brings us to Rowan, who is uh, covered in fairy fire and is also blessed by the botic inspiration. <laughs> what would you like to do, Rowan? I'm gonna pull out the freaking crossbow bolt out of her arm. Yeah, break that off. And then give the worst little battle cry you've ever heard, kind of like a <laughs> and run into the fray, because why not? Okay. Uh, so she's going to run there and then up here and then 
take a swing at the guy next to uh, Cyrus. Absolutely, go for it. This guy. Da -da -da -da, with my longsword. Oop. Oh, There's it's a nine. nine. Unfortunately, he cackles at you as he turns away your blow with his scimitar. I end my turn there. You could use your bardic inspiration. I could. could. Do I have to declare that I want to use it before? Yeah, I we'll just it? let it run. No, that's fine. Go ahead. All right, sure. I'll try. You do it after you roll, but normally before I arbitrate whether or not it hits. All right. Uh, but it's total. It's fine. One d six. Oh, that I is a one. one. Oh. Unfortunately, oh, no. it does not save you this time, and the Bardic Inspiration falls away. Unsuccessful. <laughs> Cyrus, though, it is now your turn. What would you like to do? I would like to uh, once again go at the the, the, the ringleader here. Yes. You know, give him the old one-two. Just uh, hit him with the, the staff and then elbow him in the ugly, the ugly mug of his. He's covered in this brilliant fairy fire, giving you advantage on both of these attacks here. So the first so one eight, of the yeah. quarterstaff will indeed hit with a 20. So go ahead and roll me some damage for 11 that. 11? 11? Lightning damage. Yeah, as you clock wow. this guy, uh, he, you, we hear the crack across the bar, right? And then like, uh, there's a collective ooh from the patrons that are standing <laughs> around kind of watching this here. There's a the uh, the kind of giant ogreish looking one has peeked their head in and is looking like, <laughs> you got him good. <laughs> yeah, you do 11 points of damage to this guy. Um, Okay, the unarmed strike, unfortunately, though, does not hit. Is there anything else that you would like to do with your turn? Uh, nope. All right. Mm, nope. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> All righty then. Uh, this brings us to Bandit at Initiative. Bandit. I keep saying Bandit because that's their token. Pirate at Initiative 20 here. Who's dead? Oh, that's good. Um, but this guy here, Captain Deadeye, uh, is upset with you and is uh, going to make a couple of attacks in your general direction, one of which is going to hit uh, for four slashing damage, Cyrus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Cyrus is looking a little hard pressed on all sides here. Um, this one is unhappy about you guys trying to run away up the stairs. Is going to <laughs> unleash a crossbow shot. Uh, it impacts the banister right here, unable to hit you. Uh, this guy back here is going to copy him and is going to try to hit Francis that's sitting there up front and rolls a 17 to hit, which is going to for uh, five more piercing damage, oh Francis. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, okay. This brings up this guy here who is going to attack V with a scimitar. Uh, rolls a nine. V is just not going to take any damage today. No, this is great. And this brings us to V's <laughs> turn. V, what would you like to do? Okay, I have, I have a question because of this one. Uh, so I would like to use Thorn Whip, uh, but it says its range is 30 feet, but it is a melee spell attack. Could I get to the, the boss, big boss guy over here? Or is that the uh, random There's a melee in the spell way? attack with 30 feet? Yeah, it yeah. says range 30 feet, and then it says melee spell attack. So I'm like... Yeah, it, huh. it, it does have a 30 foot range, right? yeah. I used to use this on my druids. It's just, okay. a, it's just like a melee attack at range. It's super weird. Have you, did you did you rule it as it being okay to like pass through other creatures? Yeah, because there's a random. Would it just be person. like partial cover? Because it's like a ranged attack, basically. That's, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. That's what but I also, I uh, yeah, run it. Let's do it. All right. It's. I was like, this. I gotta ask. Uh, so, do you, um, do, you, do you do you say anything to this before you to this person before you whip out? Yeah, the, yeah, the no. Whip? So there's gonna there's gonna be uh like, uh. She's gonna say, uh, hey, you in front, duck. And she's gonna take, there's gonna be in her sleeve, just like suddenly there's like a big, like green whip with thorns comes out. And uh, she's gonna go and try to just smack the yes. uh, the leader. Yeah, so this this patron here kind of ducks. They've kind of been ducking anyways because there's literally a person on a table in front of them here. Uh, but yeah, go for it. Okay, so I, and I have advantage, right? Uh, yes, you do. One double check. Ooh, that is a natural 20, our 20. first. Uh, yes. Oh, Ooh. first attack, natural 20. We like this. All right. For four. <laughs> okay. Uh, unfortunate <laughs> rolls there, but it's okay. You deal four points of damage as you whip this guy into shape. Uh, yeah, missing the patron, thankfully. Okay, V, is there anything else that you would like to do? 
Uh, that that's it. I'm gonna say like I'm gonna try to hold them back from my patron uh, from uh, Hugo and Francis that are in the staircase that she saw. Sure. She's just trying sure. to like keep them back. Yeah. This guy up here is going to make a run and a jump off the bar, and Alan's gonna go. Hey, I really meant don't don't do that. Come on now, and is going to run this way and attempt to attack Rowan with a scimitar action. Uh, that is a ten, which misses Rowan completely. And the next one in line here uh, is going to attack I, V. This is the other one near V. I, I believe you should have attack on uh, Rowan though, uh, advantage on Rowan. Oh yeah, you unfortunately. Did. Yeah. Oh, the one above. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I, I rolled to, like, a constantly. 10 and a 7, so it would not have okay. mattered. Okay. Uh, and then I roll against V, an 11 and a 5. So we are missing <laughs> all of these currently. Oh, uh, so Hugo. Start missing me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, Hugo, what would you like to do here? Yeah, Hugo, like, at, at seeing his friend Francis be quite seriously wounded, kind of all the bravado drops, and he, he clutches a small amulet he's wearing, and he just goes, plus the shot. And he's going to shoot at the, uh, the pirate who is right uh -huh. here, one of the ones who flung a bolt yes. at us. And yes. I'm going to shoot with my longbow with advantage, and that's going to be a natural 20. Natural 20! <laughs> that was a 1 and a 20. That was a we 1 and a 20. That's how I do it. All right. And I get a, Amazing. I get <laughs> okay. 15 points so of piercing is, damage. I'm yeah, okay, for he's the dead. head. Yeah. yeah, okay, he's <laughs> dead. And and I think, unfor like, unfortunately for Alan behind him, the angle of your shot is slightly downwards, so it, like, pins him directly to the bar behind <laughs> him. There's just, like, a thunk, and he just gets pinned to the bar, and Alan's like, Hugo, come on, man. <laughs> I was gonna, and, uh, I'm yeah, sorry, I was Alan. Mega then, dead. Under my breath, you just hear, well, Fran only Francis would really hear me go, but thank you. And then I'll end my turn. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. And this brings up Francis. Now you watch as a heroic shot is made from Hugo. Uh, Francis, what would you like to do? You are uh, pretty wounded here, bud. Yeah, I've got I've got one health, but I'm going to actually do something pretty selfless. Uh, I'm right. going to walk forward uh, behind Cyrus and cast Cure Wounds on him. Oh, okay. Um, so if you just bear with me, I'll roll that. Absolutely. Uh, so you get five points of healing. And excellent. And they're going to use my bonus action to give Cyrus Bardic Inspiration this time. And then uh, I will walk back to the my position on the stairs. Uh, anyway. Yeah, avoiding any uh, any problems in the area in doing so. Looks good. Excellent. Nicely done, Francis. Very selfless of you. Um, and lucky because uh, the, one, the, the pirate here in front of Cyrus is going to attempt to make an attack. Um, and very thankfully, you uh, were able to heal him because that's a 21 that hits for two Ooh. slashing damage. I would like to react if I can. You uh, absolutely can. What are you reacting to? When a creature within five feet of you makes an attack against a target other than you, you can use a reaction to make a melee weapon attack against that attacking creature. Yes, nice. absolutely. Go ahead and make your melee weapon okay. attack. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, that is a natural, <laughs> one. natural one. Unfortunately, he, sk he skips backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Not this time! It's because you said hiya. <laughs> what's because a, what's I letting you do that? Sentinel. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, but luckily, Rowan, you get another shot at this. It is your turn. Yeah, yeah I'm going to try to hit him again. All right. Uh, let's go. Longsword. Another hiya. 18. That's an 18. Yes, that definitely hits. Go ahead and roll me some damage here. Watch. 11! 11 11. Oh, he goes, oh, nice. not this time. You plunge your sword directly into his throat and he dies. <laughs> First one was Lovely. just a faint. That's what you get Silencing for him That's what you very get for quickly in that front. Uh, yeah, uh, don't teabag, kids. <laughs> you can tell we're the Halo generation. <laughs> okay. Um, Rowan, anything gonna, else? Um, You've got one to the north of you here. Yeah. One and the other three down at the bottom. Yes. V has been deftly avoiding hey. all attacks. I'm just gonna I don't know there, how. All right, perfect. This brings up Cyrus's turn. Cyrus, you feel a little more invigorated, but you have suffered another blow. What would you like to do? I would like to, I'm not gonna connect the, the hits this time, but I'm going to go ahead and give the dude an overhead thwack with yes. my staff here, or at least attempt Give him to. the thwack. That is a 12. I would, would you like, like to use... use my inspiration, please. Absolutely, roll me a d6, please. Out of five, nice. 17. <laughs> Bardically inspired and guided, your blow does land, cracking Deadeye here. 
uh, for four bludgeoning damage. Wonderful. Uh, and my bonus action for that will be to, uh, after I come down like this, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna give him the palm in the face. <laughs> yes, go ahead, roll me the unarmed. Uh, let's see. You do have advantage. As a 22, 22, it hits. Nice. Seven. So 11 <laughs> points. <laughs> my hand did more damage than my flank. You were you were just positioning him correctly with the of staff course. first, right? Just over <laughs> Come on, you even popped in the nose once, right? It hurts like hell. All right. <laughs> I think I have. Oh, that's fortunate. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> great. Uh, un unfortunately, though, uh, Cyrus, um, that is your action, your bonus action. Would you like to move? Uh, no, I'm I am good where I am, thanks to the blessings given to me very angry about what you've done to them. Uh, they're going to make an attack at you. Uh, they roll a 10 and they roll an 18 for the second attack. The second attack lands for four slashing damage. Alrighty. All right. Uh, okay, this guy's dead, so he's off the turn order. Uh, this one is not, though, uh, and is going to... <laughs> yeah, okay. It's gonna... Kind of like tabletop over this one and leap over to Rowan here. Uh, I'm going to have him make a dexterity save to see if he can actually pull this off. He doesn't. And he ends up prone directly in front of Rowan, falling on the ground. Looks up and goes, Ooh. Oh, don't hurt me. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> so, so big joke, right? <laughs> uh, and then we flash over to where V is fighting a bunch of these pirates. Uh, and that is. Finally, one is able to roll a 17 for two slashing damage right. against you here, V. V, you do have an opportunity here to retaliate. What would you like to do? Um, well, I'm I'm gonna still focus about on the boss. So I'm just gonna be like, uh, good duck, do it again. <laughs> and she's going to cast Thorn Whip again uh, for their boss. And, I believe in uh, the intervening six seconds, this person has uh, crawled underneath the table. <laughs> so they are just they up. are hiding <laughs> underneath now. Okay, that's that's fair. Um, all right. Uh, it'll be a 22. 22 definitely hits. Go ahead and roll me some damage. Five piercing. Absolutely. Excellent. Okay, uh, that is your action, bonus action and movement. Anything you would like to do with those? still holding things back so uh yeah you are it. holding strong here i can Literally appreciate that back. <laughs> yeah absolutely uh this one up here is going to make an attack against rowan this will have an advantage due to the fairy fire that is a 19 which does mm -hmm. hit for three slashing damage rowan Ouch. uh this one uh on the table here is going to make an attack at v with their scimitar that is a five and uh, v avoids more damage <laughs> hugo what would you like to do all right i'm gonna uh take a very short little dash up the stairs a little bit more mm -hmm. uh and yeah i'm gonna fire at the one who just tried to swing at v okay it's gonna be a that's a advantage 10 on this, so unfortunately it's a 10 yeah unfortunately this does miss uh maybe you like clip the wall here just above francis's Oof. head and francis just whoa, can feel the wind of the arrow as it impacts the wall sorry about that <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i'm just gonna hold my position there that'll be my turn perfect francis what would you like to do um i'm just gonna i'm just gonna use vicious mockery on captain deadeye yeah um, absolutely so it's a dc 13 wisdom save what do you, what do you say to him? Um, I don't know. Just uh, you stink. You absolutely <laughs> stink. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> he is unfazed by this and says, "Hi now, it's all purpose." <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> um, and then I will. Um, I'll give part of inspiration to Cyrus again. All right, Cyrus. We'll leave that token there. And uh, all right, any movement, Francis? Are you good? Um. I guess I'll take one step back if you go yeah, I, I love that both Hugo and Francis <laughs> are slowly just retreating from the fight. They're like, this is a little much. We're just going to go. Just go back upstairs. There's a fire. Betting is happening. We're gonna play Why Hugo put us like in the front? He like pushed us forward first. I see now. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Rowan, this do? does Hit bring up your phone. turn. You, uh, you've, got some, you've got some friends around you, but what is on the ground in front oh, of yeah. you? This guy, I'm just kind of going to look at him and be like, Sorry, and then try and stab him. <laughs> Absolutely, you have advantage on this strike. Please roll me the attack. 
24. 24. Yes, it definitely hits. Please roll me some damage. 11 slashing. 11 slashing damage. He looks, please don't hurt me. And you plunge your sword directly through his spine, uh, killing him instantly. Oh, God. I think you hurt him. <laughs> yeah. Just a flash wound. Turns out Rowan's rather brutal. Uh, mm. Okay. So. Uh, and then just with my else, bonus Rowan? action, I just want to do the second win thing and regain yeah. some hit points. Yes, yes, yes. So it's a, a D2. 1d10 plus my fighter plus level. One, so, ten. 10. Nice. Woo. You are, Sweet. wow. You are back to max. Yep. And we move to Cyrus. Cyrus, what would you like to do? You are, again, blessed by your new bard friend. I'm going to go ahead and just give him the, give him the old thrust there. G yeah. Oh, yeah. Stick it to give him. Give him the old stick you in the face. You do have advantage on this. That is a 14. 14. Um, I'm going to use the inspiration. I don't know what his is. That's a wonderful out. idea. <laughs> this, one, this one, 19. Again, uh, from behind you, uh, maybe Francis <laughs> is like, to the left! And you thrust <laughs> a little bit to the left, <laughs> and you nail him again directly in the schnoz. Oh, another 11! 11. 11. 11. Yep. He gets hit nice. in the nose again. He's bleeding profusely like a little faucet <laughs> here. It's been broken twice now. So uh, what would you like to do with your bonus action, and at this my point, monk I'm friend? Gonna, I'm going to give him the good real fist, just like oh. did one of oh, these yeah. full-on right hook. Yeah, absolutely. Roll it for me. Let's see what happened. That is a natural oh! 20. Oh. Bye. Nice. Eight Bye. damage. Mm -hmm. So that is 19 total damage. Um, you note that if you would, I mean, you do this to any normal person and they're 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 gone, right? They're out like a light. He's down on the grass. <sighs> spitting out blood. It's just dripping down from him. And he gets the blood clot out of his nose. He's like, I'm not done yet. But I would, I would look at him and severely injured. I would look at him and say, concede. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that, that's my turn. He's not conceding. He will attack no, you here. Uh, he's a very angry, angry man. Um, the second strike that he makes is an 18. It hits for eight slashing damage. Good night. That's, yeah. <laughs> Cyrus, we watch as Cyrus just puts some some pepper on their last set of attacks, uh, goes down as eventually the blades, the blades too much to handle. It's always Justin first, and it's too great. It is always me first. <laughs> well, John's not here, so John can't die first. So, yeah. you know. I'm not, you know, not always in the front. Sometimes in the, I'm in the back line. Still always the first. Still always the first. Hey, you know, I'm glad I can keep up one tradition being yeah. a new DM here. It's perfect. I mean, that's just because I hate you, Justin. So it's, yeah. it's fine. Okay. I'm sleeping. It's okay. This one's going to step up here uh, after he, he attacks Cyrus and he's like, you, the one with a whip, you're next. <laughs> uh, and then, wow, V is surrounded on three different sides here. Yep. Uh, and one of them is going to make an attack at you. The one to your direct south rolls a 10 and misses you. V, what would you like to do? Um, I'm gonna look over and see like Cyrus slump down, and I'm like, "Oh, that's not allowed." And she's gonna, <laughs> she's actually gonna take out her. This time, you actually see kind of a little bit of her robotic hand, and she's gonna like grab onto uh onto the boss, and you shocking grasp. Okay, absolutely. And try to there's electric just flow starts flowing through her like. Reach her out hand. to try and grab the captain here. <laughs> And uh, let's see. See if you can't give him a little of a force lightning. Yeah, that's that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, all right. Don't have it there. Um, Should be on your spells. Yeah, it's 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 not like it's on. Hmm. Let's see. Why do I always have these issues? Uh, <laughs> if you so if you click the text uh, shocking grasp on your spell sheets, does it does it cast for you? It might no. bring up a text box. No. Oh. There he goes. Thorn whip. Oh no, that's that... Thorn Whip. Thorn... Why is Why it did... doing that... Thorn Whip? To be fair, Thorn Whip's roll works because it's a melee it's spell It's the attack, same so... roll. That's so weird. Okay. That's super weird. Regardless, roll it for me one more time now that we know oh, what's okay. going to do this. Okay. Um, and, and we'll... Sure. Wait, Shocking Grass says spell save DC. Oh no, it's just no. It's, that's okay. just blank. It's, just, it's a yeah, melee spell attack. It's still a melee spell, spell attack. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, you reach out with your your lightning hand and he I'll slaps it away with his scimitar. And he's like, "Whoa, whoa hang on there, that looks painful." Um, I'll, I'll, that, that that's my entire turn. And then I say, "Well, uh, 
How dare you do that to my friends? And past turn. <laughs> All right. Uh, the one to the furthest north here is going to attack Rowan. Mm -hmm. uh, some scimitar action. Uh, they do roll a 21. That hits. Uh, and they will hit you for five. Ow. Rowan. Yeah, pretty pretty hefty, hefty blow there. The one to the southwest of V is going to make an attack from the top of the table again and goes, ha ha, and misses again because <laughs> apparently the both these guys down here are cannot hit anything. No, they can't. You go. It is now your turn. What would you like to do? Okay, uh, yeah, I'm going to just shoot an arrow at the captain, I think, mm -hmm. while he's dodging the shock and grasp with advantage. Yeah, you've got a, a nice little angle here over V's shoulder. A 23 does indeed hit. Go ahead and roll me some damage uh, for this. Seven piercing and three sneak attack damage because V is next to them. Yes, it is. So 10 points of damage. All right, excellent. 10 more points of damage. You note as the arrow sinks deep in front of him, V, you can see this pretty uh, pretty closely as well. It's like, another hit like that, this this guy's not long for the world. All right. Oh, yeah, that's uh, it. That's Hugo, it anything turn. else? No, no I'm, right. I'm very trapped by Francis or leaving the fight. So Yeah, I'll you can just go turn. upstairs. <laughs> I'll just walk off. You can just I'll go live, upstairs. I'll, I'll live my um, <laughs> Francis, what would you like to do? Uh, I shall once again hovel out of my sanctuary at the staircase um, and go up to Cyrus and cast Cure Wounds on him. Absolutely, go ahead and cast it. Uh, seven <laughs> points seven! of healing oh, this it's time. Huge. It's um, huge. But I, I will just have to end my turn there. I don't want to take okay. an attack. Yeah, you don't want to take. You don't want to get hit by this guy. I have I'm one impressed hit point, that you've. I'm impressed you've lived this long. I'll be honest with that one hit point. <laughs> it's the staircase uh, strat. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> do I leave? Do I stay? Do I go? All right, Rowan. It is now your turn. What would you like to do? All right, I'm gonna swing at the guy to my north. Absolutely. With my long sword. Twenty-two. Oh yeah, okay. Twenty-two hits. Go ahead and roll me some damage. Seven, Seven slashing. slashing damage. You lay a heavy blow across this man's chest, biting deep into his leather armor. There, uh, he does not go down, but uh, he oh. seems pretty afraid of another strike like that. Shit! I was hoping he'd go down. Well, balls. That ends my turn. All righty then. This brings us to uh, Cyrus on the ground, formerly unconscious. Uh, you look up and you note. Your your bardic friend Francis, who's been yelling directions at you the entirety of the fight, now has uh, given you another little burst of healing. Nice. <laughs> what, like, kind of in the motion of standing, we're going to go ahead and uh, once again just try and hit the black eye. Yeah, what was the, the, from, eye. the from <laughs> the <eye>. ground <laughs> uppercut, right? Like, we, we are firmly in Street Fighter here as you go directly <laughs> from the ground to the top that is a natural Ooh, 20 yeah. in doing so perfect absolutely hits yeah, for 11 <laughs> and yeah I st how would you like to stylize this in any way shape and form as you get up off the ground and uh kill this man uh so yeah essentially uh my I, i'm rising up with my staff and mm. i essentially like knock this dude into the air and you mm. just see like his nose like his face cave in <laughs> as he falls down <laughs> And he cracks as he gets shoved all the way backwards as he knocks into the table, which like knocks this guy over, which, you know, knocks the table over, scatters these patrons around and they're running. <laughs> and they're just like, ah, no, don't hurt me. This one crawls <laughs> away and is now underneath this other table. Uh, yeah. And let's see if this guy, as he gets knocked off the table, if he, uh, yep, he, uh, he goes prone as well as he can't keep his balance on top of the table there. And uh, yeah, there it is. Nicely struck. That is just your action. What, would, uh, what else would you like to do? <laughs> uh, I think technically that's all I can do, right? Unle uh, or am you I able to just like- uh... An unarmed strike that you can do against okay. anyone. Cool, I didn't know if I could do it against anyone. So yeah, <laughs> if, I'm, uh... you, if you make the attack action, you can then just make your unarmed strike regardless. Cool. Uh, so yeah, I suppose I will uh, move up here next to V. Okay. Yeah. And uh, just kind of do a good old-fashioned kick to this dude. Yeah, see if you can't, you know, Sparta kick this Sparta guy kick, over to the yeah. wall. Yeah, nice. 17 does indeed hit. Go ahead and roll me some damage for four. Yep. So you, you basically get his attention as you knock the breath out of him, your kick landing directly into his rib cage. Uh, yeah, good turn, man. All right. We like that. <laughs> All thanks Anything to Francis. Else? Yeah, you've yes. now moved. You've attacked. You've done your thing. Okay, yeah. this guy is dead. So he goes off the turn order. Poor captain. 
Uh, the guy that you just kicked, though, is, is is now going to panic a little bit because his captain is dead, but he's going to still try and attack V because he's, I don't think he's gotten a hit yet, and he continues to not do so. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's double it's fives. It's the cape. You don't know where it is. Like, where's her body? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this brings up V. V, what would you like to do? Um, well, seeing how Francis came over to help and, and brought him back, uh, and she didn't, wasn't able to touch them. She's actually going to use cure wounds on Francis oh, to cool. uh, make him feel a little better. <laughs> yeah. Does your cure wounds have any uh, specific stylization? Uh, she's gonna say, "Well, this is this is for damage, and then this is for heal." And she's gonna grab oh, him with the other heal. Okay. <laughs> nice. Cool. So it's a, he, the, maybe you like reach out. And he's like, no, 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 not the electricity, not the electricity. And like, it's just like this really bright glowing. I don't need CPR. Soothing. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh, so that's your action. You recover seven hit points here, Francis. Nice. V, is there anything else that you would like to do with your turn? That's it. I'm going to hold back and uh, kind of taunt the guy on and say, you're yeah. next. <laughs> All right. This guy's going to uh, get more square up with Rowan here and is going to make an attack that is a natural one. Rowan, you disarm the man. His scimitar goes sliding to the ground. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately for him. This guy's prone down here, but he does get the opportunity to stand up. He's also going to take stock of the situation, and let's see how smart he is. Uh, the answer is not. Not smart. Not smart. He is going to... Uh, how? Do yeah, okay. He's going to attempt to kick the table at Cyrus here. Um, <laughs> he does so. Cyrus, maybe an athletics check. Not, not acrobatics? <laughs> uh, would you like to avoid it or stop it? I would like to avoid it. Acrobatics. A 16, 16. yeah. You like, like you just kind of like hop over it. It's not that tall as he kicks it over to you. And you, he's just like, uh, 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 I think that's my cue to go. And he's going to start running away. He's going to run outside. <laughs> that's his turn. He's now outside. Uh, the ogre just lets him go. She does not care. <laughs> I love the uh, fact that, like, you even mentioned that the bouncers are only here for, like, the yeah. actual patrons. Like, yeah. or the, the, the workers, like, eh, if you get a fight, she, you get a fight. She's just watching. The rest of the patrons that are around here are either just hiding or just watching. Alan is just slowly shaking his head the entire time, and now he's got a rag out, and he's, like, trying to get this guy's head that's pinned on his, <laughs> on his bar top off without damaging his bar even more. So, you know, they're just trying to live their lives. Hugo! It's your turn, though. All right. Uh, like yeah, I'll, I'll sort of uh, flip my rapier out with a flourish. And as I'm walking down the stairs, I I'll yell to the remaining pirates and I'll say, your captain is dead. I suggest you leave. And, uh, well, do they do they react? Uh, I think this one might notice because he's like, he's standing back a little bit for a moment because he's been disarmed. And so maybe he notes that you're saying that. Uh, this one here, let's see if he's he's... So, yep, okay. They, they all definitely hear you, and they note as you walk down the stairs, and they're kind of, like, tentatively waiting. Okay, well, I, I'll walk up to the one next to V, and uh, I'll just kind of hold them at, you know, the, the point of my rapier by the throat, threatening mm -hmm. an attack, and I guess I'll see what they do. Can I, can I prepare that if, they, if this one takes any more hostile action, I'll attack them? Uh, can you roll me a persuasion check at advantage? Yes, okay. This Pretty good at that, so 25. That is a 25. Uh, it seems that, because as Rowan also has the other one at sword point here, ostensibly, the combat ends. They drop their weapons there, just like, <laughs> no, didn't, no harm, no foul. Just, uh, we're just going to go, I guess, right? The, the one I've got at sword point, I will, I will just say, leave. Okay. Uh, is anyone going to stop this one from leaving here? No, no. Okay. Nope. Yeah, I'm he's just going he's going to scramble away past the past the half ogre and meet up with his friend out there. Rowan, do you stop the one from the north from leaving? No, I just keep my sword at him and he leaves. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and they run away and the that the half ogre over here is just like <laughs> <laughs> That was really good. That was fun. I like that. <laughs> Alan, we should hire them for shows. That was great. <laughs> and the rest of the people around in the in the bar here, as the uh, the fight kind of ends, they just like turn to their drinks, write some tables, kind of scrub <laughs> off the blood stains from around, or like you know throw away the body from where they are and uh, 
get their drinks. Yeah, I'll go and, and just, get uh, my arrow and like unstick the one's head to the bar counter and go, sorry about that, Alan. No, you know, be careful, 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 and you rip it out and it just like leaves this, this giant chunk comes out of the bar with it where it was stuck. And he's like, oh. oh. What do you want this back? It was an antique. Maybe some glue. Do you want it back? I'll just leave it here. And I'll just pop the arrow and the ripped out bit of wood on the <laughs> just counter. Just an arrow like, stuck gingerly there. Gingerly just like, like put it down. Ah, Sorry. Fine, Hugo. I, is your business concluded? Or should I expect I should more of these so. striped pant pirate boys to show up? I believe the one that you described as smelling rather floral uh, was <laughs> in charge of them. So I, I believe it's concluded, yes. Excellent. Um, I think as 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 so happens this t t t Tarina is just this token don't worry it's the same Tarina but uh, they walk down the stairs as I was like ah well oh, that was a lovely nap oh seems that you met my friends job well done nice <laughs> yes they so, were uh, uh, rather unwilling at first to listen to Riza well, that's all well and good then. Um, well, whatever they've got on them is yours. I don't really care about it. Uh, well, I don't care too much for trinkets of the dead, but thank you, I suppose. Now, as for your side of the deal. Clank is like piling bodies <laughs> over in this corner now. He's going to just start pot piling them up into the booth. He's definitely just watching him. Yeah, just clank, 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 clank picks him up, starts throwing <laughs> them in the booth. Clank, clank. And then he returns to his post after he does so. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, what else? What would anyone like to uh, to do here? Uh, he's going to look over to Rowan, who has still a little bit of fairy fire on. And says, <laughs> although you look great, and she's going to drop the concentration. So uh, she'll stop glowing. <laughs> Rowan is no longer sparkly. Thank you. I guess, I'll, I guess I'll go sort of kick over the body of the captain and see if he had anything obviously valuable on him. But. Yeah, he's got a belt pouch with 32 gold and 15 silver. He's also got a bunch of gold necklaces on, a, a black and gold ring with a white pearl in it. And uh, it, it's all worth rather a lot on first glance. I'll be taking the white pearl. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah I mean, I'll, 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 I, I won't like take it for myself, but I'll kind of pick it up and pop it on one of like the tables next to me just to sure. illustrate like look he had stuff uh, but I things. will I will take a look at that ring I'll 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 keep the ring I'll have a little look I'm at it keep that one yeah the white pearl ring yeah, pretty I'll, nice I'll roll okay. that over in my hand and take a little gander at it yeah he also has a, a scroll and this is totally not what he has but I think it's funny as like, he has a scroll and it says he who holds this scroll is the owner of the uncivil serpent well, I'll read that out to... I imagine Francis would be by me. I'll read that to Francis and I'll go, looks like we may have inherited a new business. <laughs> I don't know if you'd make a, a very good pirate, Hugo. Perhaps not, but I rather fancy myself as a organizer of pirates, perhaps. <laughs> I'm not one for really sailing, but I could certainly tell them where to sail. Or well, maybe you could just sell the ship. That is also an option, yes. I'll essentially speak behind them. Uh, at, essentially out of nowhere, just like... Piracy is bad. I'm going to pick up what appears to be a rough uh, fifth of the gold slash silver. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't stop him taking any of it, really. I'm kind of yeah, rolling it's all over kind of the... just sitting on the table. If you guys don't take it, the patrons here definitely. Yeah, I, I yeah. will. I will. Um, I will take a necklace. Yeah, okay. Nice here. I'll, uh, I'll, po I'll pocket. <laughs> not not literally pocket, but I'll kind of tuck away the ring and just say, "This is far too nice for somebody such as him to be owning." Um, he's gonna walk over and and, and get some gold and say, "Um, well, this will make for some good cooking supplies, at least." I'm sorry. What? Do you eat gold? No, no, no. The ingredients. The... Oh, but oh, yeah. oh, you're talking about food. I see. Yes. Sorry. Most unexpected from you. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, 
we'll, we'll, we can speak later. You will uh, figure it out. Um, because I have that thing that I need to tell you, and then I probably need to go. Uh, Alan, more drinks. Uh, we'll be upstairs again. And yeah, come on. Yeah, I mean, I'll follow her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Eventually, the drinks do come up, and uh, she's like, "All right, you did good. I do thank you for that." And maybe I owe you a teeny tiny one. Maybe, but here's your information. Several blocks uh, northwest of here, there is a public bathhouse. It has a walled garden, some frolicking nymphs carved into the front gates. Uh, the followers of the Dead Three have been seen coming and going from this bathhouse. I'm told there's a secret door inside that leads to some kind of dungeon. And that is where they're hiding. Huh? Pretty good, right? It's rather good. Tell me, what are you basing this on? What am I, I I'm, well. Have you seen it with your own eyes or is this hearsay? She looks over at you and speaks in thieves' cant. She goes, you know as well as I do how this works. And I'll reply in thieves' cant and say, I know, but my friends may be somewhat dubious. I saw it with my own eyes, she says Marvelous. back in common. In common. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, I suppose we know where to find you should your information be false. And remember our part of the deal. But... I see no reason our business hasn't concluded. Sounds good to me. She raises another large ale glass. Cheers. Yeah, Thanks for the murder. In... <laughs> I'd really rather yeah, you prefer... I'm, I'm just cleaning my staff. <laughs> I'd really rather you wouldn't refer it to as murder. It was technically self-defense. They did attack us, but... Very well. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll raise my mug of ale to her and clink sure. it. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Uh, and as of this point in time, I'm going to consider this being a short rest for you. So if you would like to have rolled any hit die and stuff like that, that's cool. But also, welcome to level two. Yeah. Hey. So by the time we go to, <laughs> I, I believe this is probably our cutoff point here, hmm. Connor. Am I, think, I, I think so, yeah. Do that correctly? I mean, I gotta right. go, yeah. Justin has class yeah. to attend to. So. I, was trying, I was trying to keep it in mind as we, as we went through the combat. <laughs> it's um, beautifully yeah, timed, I we, must say. When we play <laughs> again. Uh, please have level two prepared. Ask me any questions if you would like to. And thank you for playing in our first session of uh, Descent to Avernus. We're not in hell yet. We're so not. that's been fun. Not yet. Yes. Not thank yet, you. Uh, yeah. Thank you everyone so much for watching or listening, whatever you may be doing. Once again, appreciate your support on the video. Hope you enjoyed it. And I just want to extend, I think on behalf of all the other players, a huge thank you to Joel. Absolutely incredible mm -hmm. job. I had so much fun. Thank you so much. That was great. It was thank wonderful. Great having you. And it. We'll be back in me. two weeks for episode two. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to see that. Make sure you follow everybody down below. Twitter, YouTube links, all of that good stuff. Uh, obviously, we have other campaigns. Joel runs other campaigns on his channel, which are fantastic. One of them has Alias in. I recommend you go check them out. Uh, really couldn't recommend them more. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>